All right, here we go with some LEC games. Start with uh, G2 versus SK, because here on Monte Cristo stream, we like to watch Swiffer suffer. Swiffer sw suffer, Swiffer suffer, Swiffer suffer. It's hard to say quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Androx, for your 12 months of subscriptions. I appreciate it. Team gonna play off, and against G2, what a tall ass, what a big basket of eggs, Dagda. Especially as you say against G2, because they, after losing the Fnatic, were no slouches when it came into their next game and very quickly wanted to try and uh, dissipate any sort of rumors that were going around that they might be looking weak. So SK might be feeling the brunt of that here today as well. Already getting a lot of AD carry bans, so curious to see if we get that. All right, uh, Draven not banned for the first time. I mean, Han Sama. All right, we're going to first pick Nico, interestingly. Caps has been good with it. Ari Lee Sin. Oh, there's the Draven. Well, what a surprise. You don't ban it, you're going to get it picked. Just blinded straight up. Interesting. They're banning the Renata and the Braum. Okay, the Braum makes sense. Nautilus still up. Just support Nico, though. Oh, we're back to the support Lissandra into Rakan. Oh, no, we're not. Back to support Nico. All right. Seems strong. Haven't ever seen a Draven Nico lane, but you'd have to think it'll look good. Full LEC day. Yep. Tomorrow will be as well, most likely. All right, I mean, pretty standard composition here. Sad Mickey X didn't play his Lissandra counter into Rakan. Would have loved to have seen that. And I guess we're playing Rek'Sai in the top side. I Rek'Sai is strong in the jungle on this patch, but I have no idea what a Rek'Sai top build looks like. Looks like Grasp. That's not surprising. We'll see what itemization he goes, though. Stride Breaker, probably. I think a lot of that is going to start with Isma Niski. I mean, you have a very strong mid-jungle combo that you want to try and look to play around and set up so then you can move that into the bottom side. Keep Hansam and Mickey honest, but if you don't, you're going to be in a bad spot. I mean, this is all about just single target bursting somebody down to get Viego resets. So lots of high single target damage. You also can... I mean, this is interesting, guys. This comp is interesting because you can set it up, right? Uh, Draven ult is an execute, right? Uh, this is an execute. Rex IR. So there's a lot of ways to set up single target execute damage into, and then you have a lot of CC between Annie and Nico. It's a pretty cool composition. IMO. So he took W at level one? I guess so he can harass and just heal. That's fucking annoying, especially with uh, grass procs. All right, I'm into it. Can't see screen right. What is this? What is this? Thank you. All right, now you should be able to see it. Woo! Okay, you can see it now. I don't know why it disabled, but there we go. Every time you you burrow yourself, so you're just able to out trade and out last. Did I watch Perfect Fist KDF? I did. And if anyone missed the patch notes, the, the awesome thing about Rexai now is like the attack wind up and the ability to come out of unborrow and get an auto. It doesn't feel as janky as the pretty heavy trades towards mid. We'll keep an eye on that. But the Rexai top. Now the ability to unborrow, get those orders out, as you were saying, weave and duck and dive, dodge, dip, dive and dodge again, is a lot better now. So I'm kind of interested to watch myself as a, a Rex Eye aficionado. I'm sorry the end is not here to help us through this. He'd probably recommend an Infinity Edge, but a quick <laughs> note on that as well is that, you know, Irrelevant's been playing at top as well. BB, we said in solo queue, Whippo, her and There we go. Nice play here. They saw a flash, I guess, flash. No, they don't even need it. It's too fucking easy. Why does he have 11 CS? He he didn't actually take all of the bot camp. No, he did. 
your lane opponent, and that's how you get... No, he did. He didn't take all the raptors? But the Rek'Sai top, now the ability to... Rek'Sai aficionado, I'm sorry, what is that? As you were saying, weave and duck and dive, dodge, dip, dive and dodge again. Yeah, he didn't actually finish off the raptor camp. It's whatever, he got three. ...as well, BB, we said in solo queue, Whippo, or an energy the same as Flactra Flight. Ignore the Rek'Sai because mid is just there! Two flashes used to pick that up. First blood to G2. But this relieves a lot of pressure on other lanes, which is nice. Keeps the jungler occupied, keeps Yzma in sight, so he can push in mid and top. It's a lot of pressure from G2. I mean, he might be able to get a root down. Yep, nice, nice job. Okay, he got the root down, but not enough. So I think a lot of this again is going to be, hey, look, G two, you get control over boss. Yeah. I can go tank Rexi. Well, yeah, but it's stride breaker is kind of necessary in Rexi, so you probably take stride breaker into tank items. Randuins, maybe. Nearly six minutes for level six in the solo lanes, right? It's kind of the way that crashes about 5.30 is when you be able to hit level six. So in theory, Niski should be able to avoid any repeat. Is the best way to train G2 for internationals is just to throw them into a hyperbolic time chamber with Rogue. <laughs> That's funny. But Isma, if you can work with him, maybe you can get some sort of play into mid lane and close down on G2. Because if you get control mid, you get so much control over bot lane. This game is as good as dead for SK. Yep. Feels like something that we've seen so well from Ari's internationally is Han Sama not going to get rooted up. It's a failure there. It is a three versus three. As Jike now flies in as well, but a chance for X Kick to get the stun, and unfortunately, it doesn't work out. Nice from so you don't end up just getting frozen and more of that wave lost. But now Isma going to show up. I don't think you can really follow that. But they're not going to have flashes though to make a play at six, at the moment. which is kind of annoying for G2. Holy shit, dude. The healing from those Rek'Sai is just so obnoxious. Yeah, Relan's gotta be careful, dude. He could actually die once Rek'Sai hits six. That is the Rek'Sai E. So she is able to deal with tanks better. And Daxi, you know, I was making a point before Caps got set up for that first blood that Irrelevant's the other person that I can see here playing a hell out of BB sucks. He doesn't suck. Irrelevant's like, oh, come on, man. I've really just started playing this in solo queue. What is Saken chewing while he's playing? How much pressure do they want to try and put onto this though? I think again, if you're SK, it's just try and keep yourself at arm's length, but it's already causing issues for Exekick. You can see he's falling majorly down in CS. They're trying to get some sort of vision troll in the river, but all right, interesting. He went by me Cinder first. It's opening up Mickey to continuously make these plays mid and try and punish Niski while he has no flash. And then again, he has the spirit rush available, so things get a little bit difficult, but it was that flash burned early on that Dagda just mentioned. It might open things up. For G2, they have priority bot, priority mid. Let's see what they can do around Dragon side, because there's been a lot of teams flexing around this area, Dagda, but there hasn't been a full commit to start the objective. Yeah, just... Yeah, SK have been doing a good job of getting vision into crucial places, so that's why G2 haven't really been able to follow up on any more, although... The classic anime, uh, <laughs> Bangers only proceeds to review LEC games. Well, that's the games we got for today, guys. Sorry. We have, we have a long time to wait for LCK playoffs, which are, not all, which are also not going to be bangers. The universe must give us bangers to review. Dude, SK is so bad. Yikes, just got level six, by the way, off 
stealing some there's experience his. on the bottom side. Isma snuck into the bush. He will hit six off the... Oh, did he stop it from getting in the bush? Nah, he saw it. He definitely saw it. They saw that the Lee Sin was there for sure. Yeah. I mean, nice try from Doss to try and interrupt it and see if you could prevent it. But also, I think the fact that you are immediately jumping onto a definite clone <laughs> makes it a little bit obvious. A little bit so, tough, yeah. yeah, so G2, they're like, right. Chances are Isma is backed away from this bottom side of the map. We're going to go for the dragon. Uh, Yike also has a level advantage there because Isma has been spending so much time to try and cover for a lot of what G2 are trying to do. So even though it's not technically working out with more kills going their way. How did EU go so bad? I mean, G2 is very good. 22 CS lead bot. You're looking at a good amount of control of the mid lane as well. What's wrong with G2? Nothing. Behind, but he's going to provide more of that facility Tater saw when he yeah. gets to these team fights and yikes ahead as well. I mean, look, if you see Hunt Thank you, James Horsley. Uh, missed the draft. Who has the better comp? I mean, SK's comp is more standard, but the thing about G2's comp is that it's basically primed to give Viego resets with a lot of assassination potential, like single target executes. Lost to NRG. I mean, I hate to tell you this, but G2 was the better team at Worlds. NRG just had one good day, but G2 is better on the whole. And how's energy doing now, guys? How's your energy today, dickhead? No, this is the first game. We'll do uh, we'll do some Carmine Corp later. Also, without Yike in the area, I don't think they can really push on for too much more. But I am curious to see how they want to try and approach this because I think Yike would like to try and go for, like, say, the early void grubs here because you're getting a lot of chip damage across the board. Like Yike can play through mid but is also kind of happy at this stage with how well the game's going. early void grubs i mean the one's already been taken and we're not going to see a respawn because it's nine and a half minutes so there are no early void grubs there are none i wonder what g2 do well mid games yes consistently this five and one team who you know the only loss was to fanatic which was uh sound like a breakthrough for fanatic but still g2 are looking like one of the best teams in the league once again they're already going to msi so that's also good news for eu fans the reason i'm talking about this is because going up against sk there's always going to be an uphill battle for sk regardless of where the game's at i'm talking historically coming into this game sk have got a lot of explaining to do to kind of bridge the gap between mid to top tier teams now oh Mace they're going into it nico has ult on Sama ult. Oh, he has no mana. I mean, that was very, very close. Already threw the ult out. When did he throw that ult out? Now maybe it starts. Kick backwards. It's a good way as Mickey gets a tangle bar. Pop blossom though. And there's no support. Oh, it was right there. All right. After the heartbreaker and Han Summit thinks about coming. He's not flashed. Fires away pressures, but it won't turn into a dive with all the tools used by G2. It gets close. I mean, that was very, very close to Isma going down. But now he's starting to move up towards the mid lane as well. And this can quite far extended on the mid. We'll probably have to ult away from this because Cap's trying to build up that point and click. Oh, there's my cannon minion. Oh, he just, he bypassed the mid lane. Right. <laughs> Vicky just frolicking around and Niski has to respect it. It is the fake one as well. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just waiting for it. That stays for way too long. I think all <laughs> league play actor, but... Take my frustrations away. Broken Blade does have the Void they Rush don't know available. Exit kick and Doss are on the top side now. No, he's not. He's got a million tunnels. Oh, my God. Look at his tunnel network. And he can just go over here next. So annoying. It's like going on the subway as Caps gets away, flashes away. Meanwhile, Sonic Wave, but a great stun. A beautiful one as Isma tanks it up, but Tibbers comes out and he's Yike. They've overdove in this. Niski doesn't get out in the end. It's a one for one. They thought they were setting up that dive perfectly, but SK are traded. It was a nice opportunity from SK. They tried to rotate top to catch BB off guard and get Void Grubs. Now, though, because they end up not going for the Void Grubs immediately, the one for one trade. And Han Sama is getting played spot. And you're not All right, so Han Sama gets played spot. Uh, they trade one for one in mid. Blade taken top lane. Broken Blade didn't even have to flash, so... Wow. SK just getting worked. And, you know, 
BB's going to smash these turret plates as well if he gets time alone. We've got two minutes left of them too. As you said, Han Summer getting his own with Mickey in the bottom side that Irrelevant can only clear wave slowly for, but this Rex side... Broken Blade back with Demo top. He's going to get another plate right now. That's a bit of a contest, but Daddy, you've raised the point that G2 don't care. They're wow, he just finishes? Sunfire? And top because you've got Demolish with a HP tank Rek'Sai with Sunfire first. He takes, he makes short work of that. And all he has to do is continue to keep that pressure up because as long as he does that, well, the rest of G2 can go Tunnel. through. There's your tunnels to hop on out. But it's getting a ton of pressure, Top. And look at where G2 were. They were just littering wards what? in that bot side. Now BB feels like he can go for it. Just takes one in. Has she got one available? No, just one there. You know, I watched The Last Airbender again recently because the Netflix has a live adaptation. I watched the real thing. That song, Secret Tunnel, is stuck in my head. I haven't seen oh. any Avatar. Here to be Misky, all in, though. Good charm in the meanwhile. Broken Blade still threatening again. The damage is there. The, the healing he gets is so crazy. Misky, but too much damage himself as G2. Well, that's going on. They're just starting the dragon. <laughs> oh, Exekick. Cap's gonna run. He's gonna die. Oh, the point. Exekick and uh, Doss don't know where to go on the map, guys. They can't go anywhere. Take the wrong spot. You're gonna Ooh. immediately. They literally can't go anywhere. They're trying They're trying to rotate into a lane where they're safe, and they just keep getting bopped. At the moment, it's 390, so Wait. that would have been a... Uh, Quite a bit of execute damage onto X kick, but he's able to back off. Still though now, Mickey moving back down into the bottom side. And you're just winning everywhere in the map for G2. X kick and Doss are trying to- It's funny how long the tunnels last, too. Last forever. I mean, your side lanes are going great for G2. So good. I mean, we, it just sounds like we're, we're talking them up consistently. But guys, like, again, look at that scoreboard for reference. It's almost a 1k gold lead between top lane. It's almost a 1k gold lead between this Draven, who is still yet to cash in. The early game's clean. Now with a 2k gold lead and for sk we're trying to look for opportunities see what they can take next herald started here yike is up here moving with caps but sk should have the run of the damage deal here dagda to try and take this down quick yeah i think g2 just don't really have position for us yeah. hansama hadn't reset boss <clears throat> you have no ult on caps mid because he used to try and burst at x kick so you end up giving it across but it'll be okay you're really looking for more of the turrets and immediately tp from bb into bot lane to try and get control there Maybe open something up. Now, the plates have gone down, so that's a bonus here for SK, who are losing quite a bit, but that means the turrets get a little bit squishier for something like this. Rek'Sai, who almost opened up topside. Han Sama moving to that said lane as well, by the way, with the Yomus and the building for the second item, while SK trying to open up mid with this Herald. And the issue for SK's draft is just going to be staying alive versus the crowd control and the single target damage that G2 have. Careful though, because again, Caps is a flash, Tibbers is up, and you could immediately be trying to look for a turnaround there, but they're happy to just continue to play three sides. Again, you'll get mid terror, but side, lane side pressure is really crazy now. You'll notice that they got this down to like one plate, so it's barely alive, and then they rotated uh, Draven up there so he can get the actual solo tower gold. Here you go, take top terror. You can end up it's really nice. Han Sama's super rich, up almost a thousand gold, in spite of the fact that he has no kills. So it's hard for Niski to actually really contest the wave state. And then from that position, G2 can then move that into a collapse on mid where you can immediately... There's 460 stacks right now. If he ever cashes in, it's going to be crazy. Uh, the thing is, Rek'Sai's uh, W heal, guys. Oh, pulled him out of his tunnel. But that's right, he's got another one. He can make another one right now. Oh god, it's so stupid. Um, it's his W heal is a percent HP heal, so the tankier he gets, like the more you know straight up HP he heals. They're still controlling this game heavily, even with caps coming in towards mid lane as well. There's a lot of members of G2 that could look to try and threaten on towards the terror, especially with Doss being so straight stripping. We back. You just followed me. You you've barely been here. You didn't even follow me. Straight stripping. Nothing was done in the end. They walk away. I guess they say mid turret Dagda, but maybe it could have been a lot more. Caps just ulted on his own head, so end up catching three members there. 
Hans Abba really wants to try and get a cash in, but it meant that everything just waited here from SK. Yes, two Ruby Crystals stacking HP. Yeah, I mean, he's going Spirit Visage, so he can heal more, guys. This is such a fucking troll Rek'Sai build. He's, his purpose is literally to... The Rek'Sai's purpose is to heal as much HP as possible from passive on P, right? And his other purpose is to press R on a low target. So that Viego resets for Viego reset. That's his purpose. More stacks you have. It's so dumb. Right now. I'm no That's a big number. But it's a big number. <laughs> when did Rexai become top viable in pro play? This is the first instance of it I'm aware of. I mean, it's. I don't think it's great in every comp, but it seems to do well into the Cassante in terms of applying pressure early. And if you're playing a Viego comp, I think it's good because, like I said, you can get good resets. I don't think it's, like, good good. I think it's situationally good. And you have a lot of engaged potential that adds in, so I'm really excited to see how BB moves towards the rest of these fights because it's third dragon for, for G2 coming up in 20 seconds. Broken Blade is hovering down the bottom side of the map without his TP. Irrelevant doing the same. We're going to see how G2 approach this one because it feels like a nice turning point for SK. Yeah, you don't have Armor Shred on the E. I don't know what he's... I think that's an old version of Rek'Sai he's thinking about because you do percent max health damage now. Physical damage if your fury is maxed on E. There's no armor shred in Rek'Sai's kit at the moment. You have to buy Black Cleaver in order to have that. The other really thing that's nice about Rek'Sai at the pro level is just the tremor sense with W. It makes it so much easier to move in on objectives. The vision control is fucking crazy. Yeah, the thing is, is that based on level, uh, so basically... You get 12% at level 1, max health healed at 100 Fury, but by level 16, it goes up to 20%, right? So level 13, Broken Blade heals for 18.4% of his max health right now, uh, which is so... Let's, let's see if we can find him. Where is he? So he's got 3,000 HP, guys. So, you know, healing for 20% of that is like 600 HP, right? So if, right now, he's healing for 18% of that. So it's like 250 HP if he's max. 270 HP, I guess, if he's like max. Um, so it's over three seconds. And then once you get Spirit Visage, that's 20% uh, more healing. Third dragon for, for G2 coming up in 20 seconds. Broken Blade is hovering down the bottom side of the map without his TP. Irrelevant doing the How did Rek'Sai do laning phases? W start and then just ha harass with uh, Grasp. And then whatever they trade with you, just burrow and then heal again. It's stupid. Take Demolish. Eat plates. Alright, Rexai's coming in. Let's watch this. Uh-oh. Good spacing by Hansama. <laughs> Look at the money! 1,400. 1,500 gold. Well, he had how many stacks? 500 stacks? Yeah, I mean, it's 18 minutes and he ain't cashed in yet. Also, the execute threshold is giga high at 500 stacks. <laughs> what a great call. Look at the money! Love it. Love that call.
It feels so unfair. He just totals about whacks you and then totals out again. There's nothing you can do. His health bar just keeps on ticking up and now G2. I love that call, the look at the money call. Oh. Goat Sai? They mean Goat C? But the coordination wasn't quite there. And honestly, it reminded me a little bit of what happened in the car. It was right there. You didn't take the goatsy. The idea of I want to go in now, rest the team weren't ready in position. And it means that it kind of blows the car open. <laughs> no, Monty. <laughs> was Rexai buffed recently? Uh, she was changed. Her her mechanics were de-jankified or de-spaghettied. And then re-spaghettied and then de-spaghettied again. And then they changed, uh, they changed her E to do percent health, max percent health damage, per percent max health damage instead of true damage at full charge. And they changed her W too, so she's, she, with tank builds, she's a lot. Straight stripping, thank you for subscribing for Goatsy. Appreciate you. The least you can do after all these years of summoning insight. I agree. It is the least you can do. Glad to have you here. No, she's still really good in jungle. Her win rate in jungle and Korean solo, a high, high level Korean solo queue is still very high. But you build Stride Breaker on that. With with that build, you build Stride Breaker. This is the first time in professional play I've seen her in top lane in a very long time. I mean, it's been many years. I mean, with that, you've got to be good, right? And for Han Sama, 10k, now he's got to show us how good he can be. Because that brings back memories, Dagger, that maybe not as pleasant after the Sooning days. Rexai feels like a peanut jungler. Yep, sure does. I agree with that. Another flex pick. I, I mean, I think it works in this particular game, but I mean, the, the level, the gold advantage is huge, like 2,000 gold. It's 3,000 now because of the, the Draven. Wow, Sundered Sky Opportunity Yomus. That seems like a very annoying build for a Draven to have. He just autos everybody once, and then Viego gets a reset on an execute. Vobacon. What a great name. Thank you for Twitch Prime sub. Niski, thank you for dying in a 1v1 to a Viego as you see him coming, but you do nothing, miss your charm, get stunned, get comboed, and then get ulted and died because you hate pressing flash or your own fucking ult, Niski. Niski's trolling. Niski's trolling, guys. And now maybe this is a better target, right? Flash is available. Is my Yike, though? He literally face checks the brush and he just like sideways charms it. Uh, 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 uh. Niski doesn't Niski doesn't feel like ulting or flashing, guys. Oh, okay. What a what a terrible day to have eyes, guys. What a terrible day to have eyes. Okay, Doss is dead. Look, it's just not going that great anymore for SK. It wasn't nah, he's gonna take the tower, I guess. Alright. Isma! Show us what you got. Give me the spy music. This is like <laughs> the James Bond. You know, you watch the Mission Impossible. You watch X Factor and there's just been a really good Can you explain why people are picking Annie into Ari? Sure. Annie is very good into Ari. So first off, at level 6, you could just drop a bear on her head and push her in, and then she can't actually do anything or make a play on the map because she's under her turret at 1 quarter HP. Um, also, later in the game, if she's dashing around like a little douche, uh, you just press Q and targeted CC her and then murder her. So she's very Annie's very strong into Ari, both in lane and in teamfights, and now Yzma is committing suicide. All right. Did Rex I get the mark here? What the fuck? How did he even get the mark on him? That's what I don't understand. Is you have to get the mark as Rex I in order to ult? He he actually just get he must have got it on his. 
Huh. Is there on top of it. BB is unstoppable, unkillable. And I think at this point, G2 are undeniable, aren't they? One of the best teams in the LEC. Sunfire? Oh, yeah, it must have been Sunfire. Because he, he actually didn't even unburrow. He just got straight kicked. Like, look at this. It must have been Sunfire gave him the mark for the damage. That's weird. But it must have been Sunfire. It must have been a tick of Sunfire. It's the only thing I can think of. Jesus Christ, what a stomp. This is a fun game to watch, though. G2, they know there's no jungler. They know there's no contest from SK. And they're just going to take the Baron. It went from Mission Impossible to Scientology. <laughs> to Johnny English. Yeah. <laughs> we got Rowan Atkinson in the building. <laughs> Man, oh. again, for SK, as they run away from the Baron, they never were really in for the first time as Zoss is just trying to get to safety. G2 pick it up. 9k gold lead. And it feels like that's all she wrote as we look at this fight again. Isma out of the bush yeah, he's been, i mean look he tries to go on to caps but caps has managed to get all of his cc back up and then as well the fact that mickey's on the way the ult coming through the tp as well immediately from bb they realize look if we can actually take this fight on the top end of the map we're going to be able to turn over towards baron we could potentially crack up the base with with the wave state that we have as well so they g2 are more than willing to try and take that fight and it's just a massive overextension from sk but look i can half understand it as well it's like G2 are already way too far ahead. They have a composition that's incredible at team fighting. Like, yep. how else do you try and get back into the game apart from picks? But, yeah, it's just a little unfortunate. And you can see, is that, like, the look on his face tells it all, doesn't it? Like, SK's option here in this game. No Swiffer cam. Now once G2 thrive in this dragon side of the map, it's SK who are running for their lives once again, but they need something here. Onto BB, the all-out is going to come through irrelevant. Maybe hoping for a better target. In the end, is G2 now channeling through the chokes. Sonic Wave there, and you look at the back line. G2 a bit separated. That was Mickey in La La Land. It's oh, that doesn't matter. SK, that's not bad as BB once again with the re-engage. Oh, there we go. Do you like Viego? Oh. Broken Blade gets dragged over. I don't think that's the guy you wanted. He's just literally sitting there healing under the turret. Oh my god. Look at that shield. He got Sterix. He, he has Spirit Visage Sterix now. He's like actually immortal. Gross. That's a nasty build. I'm into it actually. Uh, I think that's probably going to get nerfed, guys. This build is just too fucking good. 4,000 HP Rek'Sai. Look at that. He, he heals for 350 per tick. So he heals for like 1,000 HP if he's at full fury. Which is not hard to get, by the way. You can full fury after like one pop-up. And then like three Q autos. So you watch pop up, three autos, he's at full, so that's another 1,000 HP he can heal. Look at him. Oh, my God. Yep. He's still getting to the back. He doesn't even he's, He doesn't even have that much sticky. It doesn't matter. He's got a giant-ass shield from Spirit Visage and Sterex. I'll give you another time you correctly say she. What do you mean? Rek'Sai is a she, I know that. But Broken Blade is a he. Six thousand gold for Hansama. Dear Lord. From Fly and C9 to this? I don't know. I think G2 played better than Fly or C9. Super fucking good game. Oh, 
won't get to go on top bubble again. Hard time cleans that up as five members of G. Love, love me some 5,000 HP Rek'Sai. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh, he... He, he ran it down. It was his first death into the laser. Hilarious. That was a fun game, guys. I enjoyed that. I don't think I'm going to enjoy this next one. Just G2 versus Rogue. Oh, I'm braced for it, guys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm braced. And someone comes in and just nabs your the money. I mean, it's just hooray for N rated. For aviation, there's no way small that should be able to fly. Oh, my goodness, its wings are just too small, and its fat little body can't get off the ground. <laughs> small, of course, flies anyway. And tends to good old rogue versus gamers, too. All right, we're we be smoldering. So, Oriana first for Larson. I mean, historically, one of his better champions. Smolder in response to the Senna. So, they get... Sp I mean, Rogue is getting, like, the Giga Power comp, by the way. On this patch. And they ban the Braum. So, there's not going to be an Nautilus. Okay, we're going to take, uh... Jungle Wally Bear. Oh, Rel Smolder seems like an absolute trash lane. Like, let's talk about this, guys. Okay, so we get the Rek'Sai again. Now, I liked the Rek'Sai in the last game, like I said, because... Well, first off, it looked like it did very well into the Cassante. Probably would do well into the Aatrox, too. But the thing is, is, like, where is the damage pre-225 stacks? Damage? Where is it? Because, like, this guy's going to build tank. This guy's a fucking Ivern. I would have much rather have seen, I don't know, like a Kindred? Right? Kindred here? Viego? Viego? I think Viego is very strong. Viego's not banned, guys. I think Yike playing Viego feels really good here with uh, Karma and with the assassination potential again, and you just kind of wait for 225. Because this seems like ass, guys. This seems like ass, because if Han Sama gets gets booty blasted in the bot lane, I mean, there's just no pressure. Like, you you actually just can't do anything, because you also are playing Ivern. So, like, you lose this 2v2, you lose this 2v2. You lose the 3v3 in bot side, you lose all lanes, you you maybe pressure mid, you can pressure mid and top, but you're going to be exposed, and Volibear's just going to kill, kill them. That's not really what... So I really don't like the composition. I wish we, we had seen a Viego there or like a Kindred or something. Heck, even Belveth, because Yike is good at Yeah, you know what? I don't I actually don't hate the Belveth. If you have Pryo in mid and top with the the Rek'Sai and the Karma, yeah, maybe. Is, Rek is Rek'Sai top popping up in other regions? Not that I'm aware of. I haven't seen it anywhere else. G2 always trolls low ranked teams. Yeah, I mean they do happy game. I, I don't I don't read this loss as anything, guys. I mean you can check too, by the way, if you just go to GOL.gg. Or it's right here actually. Uh champions. Rexai. Let's do top. Rex Rex Rexai. Uh Six picks in top lane. Really? Who else has picked it? Am I dumb? Oh. LVP SL second division spring playoffs. Okay. Uh, LIT spring play. I don't even know what LIT lit spring playoffs is. CB LOL Academy. So it's literally, what is lit? What is this? Is this an ERL? No, 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 no. Not even CB LOL, dude. CB LOL Academy. So it's being picked up in some... What is LVP? What What is this?
The last time before this season it was picked up was 2015. I guess it was picked up some last year in Ultra Liga and LJL. But Snake versus VG Gaming, LPL Summer 2015. And then like QV, I guess, and Smeb played it in 2015. I was, pro dude, I was probably casting these games. <laughs> The last time these games were played, I was probably casting these games. Lit is Italy. Okay, LVP is a Spanish league. Thank you. So it's been a while. Must be ancient if Monty was casting it. Winter. I see five players in mid lane. G2, what's the plan? Stand around mid. LVP is Argentina, somebody says. It's not Spain. Ah, there we go. Mr. Cordoba from Argentina. Eat a steak for me, my friend. I'll make it to Patagonia eventually in my life. All right, so this comp seems trash. Monty, before he became cynical and jaded, hey man, if you don't like me, fuck off. You don't have to be here. You're choosing this life. Why are you watching a cynical and jaded old man? Right? Rogue bot lane inventory? Ah, okay. So we decided that we don't read patch notes and we're doing double support item because we're stupid. Wolves and blue, hopefully, Here we go. very quickly. Is no, not, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. So what you would usually do is right. you would pass down to this blast. Oh, well, never mind. I mean, if this still works, I kind of agree with it, because Smolder is a turd with wings early on in the game. So why not just go double support item? But it doesn't actually work. So... Pick up the wolves, press Q again, go to the blue buff, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, able to get all three camps. Marcoon is invading here. Yikes, so level two. one lost to the shopkeeper. Damn, that's rough. It's hard to lose the shopkeeper at level one, guys. Hansama's in the wall. They're trying to dive. Okay. Why do, I have so many questions, guys. I have so many fucking questions. I have so many questions. Okay. Why do they both have support items? Why does this motherfucker have ignite instead of teleport? Do we know how to play fasting Senna? Why? What? What are we actually fucking doing here? Smolder can go into the wall. Yeah, Smolder can go into the wall with E. He can. Okay, his third wave dive. JK, it's a fourth wave dive. No, it's a third wave dive. JK again. This is fourth wave. This is fourth wave. This is third wave. Unfortunately, Zoelise cannot be the one taking aggro here, guys. So I don't know what they're actually doing because the Knot doesn't want aggro. He's flying in. Comp doesn't take aggro. Comp should take aggro. He doesn't. So billions of turret shots. And instead of comp just being able to flash out or heal and run out, uh, they just kill the Nautilus. Nautilus doesn't actually have TP for God knows what fucking reason. And Hansama does have TP. But he's a turd with wings. So Hansama forgets that he's a turd with wings and actually can't do anything. And so they just did. 
Very cool. Very cool. Lose a 2v3. Very nice. Very nice. Dude, Ivern Rel Smolder has to be one of the shittiest 3v3s of all time. But now the question mark comes from this flash here from Mickey. Knocks him back. He still has subs, by the way. Comp still has heal and flash. And also, he doesn't care because Marcoon is the strongest 1v1 jungler probably in the game right now with PTA. It's actually just fucking free. Now they can kill him again because he has no flash. Uh-huh. Marcoon can kill him very easily. PTA, flash, hits E. He's dead. Dude, it, this is so free for Marcoon, actually. So it's W start Q Max for top Rek'Sai. He's going to go back and get Bond. He's, he's using demo right now. Oh, he doesn't have demo this game. Interesting. They get another punish. Now they find themselves at three and one. A one K gold lead over G two. Absolutely massive for, for them. Remember that they are playing very much a um, team fight competition. Nautilus sold support <laughs> item, bot door and shield. Can he sell his ignite and buy teleport? That's my question. Do you think he can sell his his ignite and buy teleport? He better not take aggro again. Okay, he does, but he queues out. I'm not sure what the point of that was. Why Why does comp hate taking aggro? What the fuck, man? They have no flashes. I don't think they could do that. That's correct. That is a factual statement. Although I think if humans had wings... None of us would fly that much because I think it uses a lot of energy and like we don't run everywhere. <laughs> we wouldn't fly everywhere, you know? That is a thought-provoking question. <laughs> Medic, if we had wings, we probably would have lighter bodies, so it would take less energy to fly places. We wouldn't have evolved with like fucking angel wings or some shit, like carrying our sad meat sacks everywhere. We'd have hollow bones like birds. Although I will say, I wish we did, because watching fat people try and fly would be one of the funniest things ever. There's there's a good movie in there, guys. There's a good comedy movie in there. Yeah, I mean, he was just based on the math, he was healing over a thousand at like level 16 with his itemization in the game we just watched. Why are we why are we going after this? But uh, here's the training pattern that Medic was just talking about. Burrow, heal, heal, heal. That's 47, 47, 47. So well, that's just short of like 150, something like 140, something. 140. No, 130 something. Yeah, 141, I think, but uh, close enough. G2 are in a bit of a hole here. About 700 gold behind. They do have Smolder, though. 47 stacks. They have a lot of ways to support him throughout the game. What are my headphones? Uh... Audio Tech Audio Technica What is it? 50x M50x They're great. Would recommend. even if they win both their games, their qualification is not in their hands. Uh so even if they get the next two games, I think they can still lock out in 18% of scenarios. Right. Games. So still a possibility that Rogue going three and six, which would be the end result, doesn't get them into playoffs. Is Executioner even good into Rek'Sai? 
Can't you just wait for the Grievous Wounds to end until she burrows after trade? Probably. I guess we'll find out. Slows her down a bit, I would imagine. What I need to do is once again find B-movie quotes. To bring it back. You think that'll save it? But it's probably not good, no. I think people are loving it. Are they? I'm going to close my DMs after this. I think for now. People are enjoying it. I mean, right now, Rogue is looking good. I want to see them continue this proactivity. Markoon. I mean, I, w I didn't mention it during the draft, but Markoon, when he debuted onto the league, it was Volibear with Nuke Duck that he was diving that yes. power against. Yes. Markoon, you know, when I think of Markoon, I think a lot about Volley and Jin Zhao. Uh, El Yoya, too, has been very good on Volibear in his career. Let's see how things pan out here as a dive is ensuing. Tries to get the dawning shadow. What the fuck? Turning back to those glory days. Let's see how things pan out. So comp walks up. Takes turret aggro. He's back at home. You know, returning back to those glory days. He literally wants this plate, but he takes turret aggro and then gets giga CC'd. Jesus Christ, dude. It's, it's unbelievable how bad Rogue is playing in spite of their advantages. So if anything, he's back at home, you know, returning back to those glory days. Comp knew Ivern was there? Yeah, I mean, he sees the brush. He probably could guess. You got a plate though, so it was worth, right, guys? Reincarnation. He keeps coming back as a bee and keeps just trying to sting the enemy. So the trick to stopping a dive is to fight before they dive. I mean, credit to G2. They they force that play just to So the executioners does seem to be doing some work, like Rex is now down in HP in the top side. The positioning of Larson, he's making his way across. The communication is coming through from G2, and they say, let's just go on to comp. It's actually really smart from the push as well. Really nice play. He is not expecting that to happen. CP into the mid lane. Comp trying to get away. I mean, he takes turret aggro, so what the fuck, man? He is Mickey and Yike. We'll fight a little bit as well. Land should focus as old. How did he... He used Senna Q. That's how he took aggro, I'm pretty sure. I'd love to see the current state for Hansan because he was pinging it. Pushing. Okay. Oh, towards him. There's a can of on the so, other yeah, side. Yeah, so now yeah. he's going to, like, now try and. Right. He's just going to shove that one out because it looks well, you know, yeah. last yeah, yeah, he will push it out. But, uh. Rek'Sai just doing Rek'Sai things. Borrowing. Here comes Yike. I'm borrowing. Markoon's going to join the fray as Yike locks up for the moment. Does still have the flash and will burn it to escape. Markoon used his as well in the battle. Local Blade trades in once again, and then we'll just take a quick trip to the underground. Wimbledon, Wimbledon, Wimbledon. I mean, it is it is stalling out his healing a little bit. Um, old Rek'Sai top with the farm alarm. Yeah, farm alarm. That was such a broken fantasy person. Oh, I'll just go out and just, you know, instantly be back in lane. Free teleport for my top. Yeah, was, I read this one Reddit comment where, like, they were kind of being mean, but it made me realize something where they People were like mean on reddit i know but that basically they said this pro player was something like 10 when the original rex i released oh, yeah. and it was just one of those things where i was like wait at what point are certain champions released where they're like there are going to be people playing today that had no idea like that these champions came out before they you know, you, yeah, you know what i, I mean understand, i understand what you're saying i mean First if you were 14 so today obviously. And playing League of Legends, the game would be older than you are. So we are, we are actually only four, three years. We are three years, guys, from there being pros who are younger than League of Legends. Doing leg day with an injured hamstring? Wow, I am proud of you. I, don't hurt yourself, buddy. Any idea when the new global power rankings will be out? Uh, this week. Oh, 
the charge forward by the Rek'Sai as Broken Blade falls low. He tries the bow, gets a knock of the shield, not enough. Trigger Seed won't save him now. And Cap <laughs> League of Legends, almost old enough to vote. League of Legends, almost old enough to marry in certain states and countries. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's another dive bot lane. That it is. They're setting it up by four man stack. Death charge onto Mickey TP. All right, so we're we're diving again. Broken Blade's coming down. He's here. Gets a three man knock up by using his flash. But they have no damage, so nobody can die. So we're just trolling, actually. Broken Blade falls low. He tries the bow. Gets a knock of the shield. Not enough. Trigger seed. It won't save him now. And caps can't kill off so at least. But Daisy. It's hilarious to see everybody just like TP into this. And they have no damage. This comp is like zero damage comp. It's so shit. Am I excited about League's MMO? MMOs suck balls, guys. Literally, WoW came out, and a bunch of my friends started playing WoW, and I, I tried it. I tried it, guys. I got to level 40, and after my... In my 23rd quest of fetch wolf pelts, I was like, fuck this, I'm going back to the Warcraft 3 ladder that takes skill. And then I just went back and played more Warcraft 3 1v1s. And also, that, that MMO is fucking doomed, dude. Think about this. Ghost Crawler left Riot. He left infinity money to develop a, an MMO at Riot. Literally do whatever the fuck he wants. He was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out. I'm going to make my own MMO with a new company instead and start over with less money. That's how shit that MMO is turning out, guys. He bailed. He literally made the decision to be like, I don't want infinite resources to make an MMO. This sucks. That MMO is dead on arrival, guys. That shit ain't never coming out. It ain't never coming out. Ghost Crawler's new MMO is now going to come out before that piece of shit. Also, I don't care about the world of Terra. I think League of Legends lore is fucking garbage. So, fuck it. I mean, to be fair, Warcraft's lore is also garbage. He's <laughs> coming out the same time as Star Citizen. <laughs> Do you think he left because of the lore or the company? I don't know, man. But being shackled to this absolute shit tier IP, I mean, it's amazing they got something as good as Arcane out of it, considering that the IP is an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah, I agree, Jerkies. I think Ghostcrawler wanted more freedom, and he didn't get it, so he just walked. There, there's something very seriously wrong. Like they must have, they must have like really fucked with Ghost Ghostcrawler, because otherwise, why the fuck would he leave? Doesn't make any sense. That's because of who they hired to run the show for Arcane. That lady has more accolades than Riot's entire team. They also hired my college roommate to write it, and he is a much better writer than anybody at Riot. Alright, let's watch Hansama here. He literally just gets flash hooked and then stunned and then Senna ulted and then destroyed. Now, why is he walking up on there? Why, why is he walking up on there? Who knows? Why is he... 
I th look at this. He literally pressed his TP, guys. He he pulled a deft, and he thinks he has heal. He thought he had heal. He thought he had heal, guys. Def did that very famously on Jace in the bot lane. He just like TP TP'd and died like that. I don't think I think he thought he had heal. Maybe he thought he had flash on F, but he should know where he has flash, right? I don't know. Whatever. We need a pro view of that. What happened, Hans? What happened? Uh, I can tell you what happened. He hovered over the tower and then pressed his teleport key, Betty. I mean, <laughs> didn't go well. For but him. did he misclick? Did he? Did he try to flash? Like, I mean, you got uh, was Olaf Ben? Isn't Olaf R uh, R five Omega OP on G two side? Yes. <laughs> Olaf R five would be very good here for Broken Blade. I agree. I love Karma Olaf with low mobility AD carries like Senna, Varus, Ash. Yeah, I'm a big fan of. R5 Olaf with Karma already picked. Agreed. Rather unfortunate for Hans. It really is. I will uh, bring attention to Com's build as well. He's gone Serpent's Fang Rush on the center, Ooh. which often I would say isn't great, but it's an even in the Karma Com. you're playing against. Serpent's Rail as Fang. well. Yep. Doing I have not read Ilium by Dan Simmons. No. Can I check? Yeah, have a look at it. Let me see how much shielding it actually removes. But I might, because I love Hyperium. I love Hyperium. So I should read that. See how, how quickly he's bought it. We'll see if those tooltips do line up in spectator mode with what it actually is uh, overall. You're right, he maybe he just hasn't. Auto <laughs> he has auto attacked people recently, but maybe he hasn't auto attacked anyone that was shielded recently. Perhaps. We will see. I'll uh, keep track. For now, though, I like it as an item because it's good against shields, and there are a lot of shields on sure. So often we see pros kind of fit into a cookie cutter build path on some of the champions here. Comp realizing the enemy composition has a lot of one type of utility, effective HP, and is trying to mitigate some of it at least. A 2,000 gold lead for Rogue Drake up in a minute 20. They're trying to unleash, unlock this bot lane tower. Zoe and Markun stepping forward, and Cavs, Mickey, and Ike have to give them a time of day, have to respect it. Hans Summer still only at 133 sacks, while Comp is cresting over towards that 80 mark, currently sitting at 74. Broken Blade did win out top. Uh, but it doesn't really matter too much as another hook connects and caps is pulled back. The depth charge not I love zero damage like lanes like this. Look at this. Look at this. Zero damage. Zero damage. The depth charge knocks him up and comp and knocks him down. Like pins in front of the Fucking love it. Karma Rel Ivern. Fucking zero damage. Does cross map on the top side of the map, but uh, Rogue, man, they are really. I mean, G two do have a bit of a reputation to losing to teams that they are definitely not supposed to lose against. Two months and eight days ago, Betty, guess who they lost to? Rogue. NRG. No, two months. Uh, <laughs> what? what is your perception of time? <laughs> You've been in Lost Ark for so long. I've been in that world for so long. I'm reminded no, they lost all the rogue. time. They lost oh, rogue. true. They did lose to the Rogue, yes. They lost to the Rogue at, in, in, in Best of Ones last combo. split as well. Into hook. And look at the way the ball placement is. Phenomenal. Great wombo combo. Caps legit did not get to move. And now the Dragon is up for grabs for Rogue. That's going to be their third on the docket. And a Hex, Hex Soul as well. Yep, Hex, Hex Soul, super strong. They'll get that before Smolder gets stacks. He's only at 148 right now, so they will get Hex, Hex Soul probably. The next, the, the Soul Fight will be probably before 225. Uh, maybe, maybe just as he gets 225. Do you feel like Energy was a better team, or was it a fluke slash meta thing? I mean, they were on a roll late summer. I mean, they won LCS as well. Um, but that day was like, I mean, we've seen years of Contracts play, and Contracts just had the, the games of his life. 
and then he turned back into a pumpkin. So he's been pumpkining again, guys. He's been pumpkining. You know what's hilarious is Rogue has played this game so badly that they actually are only 3k gold ahead, which will be nothing if the Smolder gets 225 stacks. This is the common thing. G2, G2 will have hyper competitive games against the best teams in the world. The second they run into a team like this, they crumble. Broken Blade goes in onto last, and Markoon Comp and Zoelisa in the vicinity to follow up. Broken Blade has so many tunnels, he looks like a doomsday prepper. Just able to escape underground at any moment. Really, we're not going to make any, uh... We're not going to make any Dune references with Rek'Sai out? I feel like this is the perfect time. No, no Shai Halud. Take out those outer towers. There is a Baron up for them if they want it, but I really think their next objective is in three and a half minutes' time, or their next neutral at least. Set up around that uh, Drake and look for the Hex Soul. Broken Blade is now healing a lot. Does it matter? It's a good question. It's also uh, an observation. I, I mean, I agree, <laughs> but I'm just, I, 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 I was leading from your point. So this is what often casting <laughs> yes. what, what happens is you'll yeah. say a point, and yes. I'll be like, oh. Well, that develops a new point in my noggin. Right. And we'll go from there. And we'll expand. We'll extrapolate some information. I've, I've never done that before. Oh, wow, thank you. That's very educational. Well, I didn't want to tell you this on so, broadcast, Betty, <laughs> but I have some feedback if yeah. you're receptive to it. What is it with G2? Why is Rogue a bad matchup for them? Because they troll, guys. They're just, they're just happy gaming. Don't read into it. It's just best of ones. Like, do you really think G2 would have lost a best of three to Rogue? They wouldn't. They fucking wouldn't. Does it actually matter that Broken Blade survives through the fight? Very unlikely that it will. He, like, he has some this damage. comp is so shit, like, though. Okay, uh, pretty good. You can I hate the Ivern, dude. I fucking hate the Ivern here. Comp is already itemized into dealing I wish this was a Viego so much. On two of the five rogue members with the G2 washed fire coach. Fanatic salivating, <laughs> thinking about getting Dylan Falco. It is very simple. I love what they did in the early game. They played it very well. G2 is now looking for picks, doing what they can. They force the flash out from Finn, not the end of the world for him. Does unlock a potential Baron start. Maybe they we also didn't think G2 could lose a best of five to NRG. They didn't lose a best of five to NRG. They lost the best of three. proactive in this early game, and I really want to see Rogue continue that form. And by the way, there's a difference between losing a best of three to NRG, the LCS champion, and losing a best of three to Rogue, actual dog shit team. Very clear right now that there are two people bought, and I feel like that they should be forcing something on the top. Viego seems tough because of range issues. Or they should be pushing top wave so they can threaten that top tower. Um, well, do you think Ivern is good? At least you could get Viego resets later in the game and you'd have speed from the Karma to actually get into the back line and engage. put this pressure on because we want to reset. We've invested our vision on the top side. We want to reset, get another slew of wards, and then push out to our bot side, gain vision control around the bot side. I agree with you. I think Rogue making a proactive call to say, we're going to do Baron probably was the right call in that moment. But if you're rogue and you're one and six, and you're playing against the team at the top of the league and you're winning, maybe you're saying, hey guys, let's just play what we've already planned. Let's not make a... All right, he's not, he's what? Go for something, cause he's nine three, stacks away. He's got 30 seconds to get nine CS. CS. Oh, he's get. he's actually getting Krugs. That's smart. The, uh, he's, he do be Krugging. Okay, there's another one. There's two. I need six CS, five CS in 20 seconds, okay? He needs one stack, which you can get just by hitting people with his W or his Q, too. They're saving, look at this, they're saving the cannon for him. They're saving the cannon for him, so he can, he got it, he got it. Alright, now they want to fight, because they actually have damage for the first time in this whole fucking game. You could have had wards deeper into this jungle. No, you couldn't have because you have no damage. They couldn't get wards in because they can't contest until Smolder is has 225 stacks because they have no damage. They have no threat. Oh, beautiful shockwave. Tries to get off the back line, but Hans Summer has hit 225, and Rogue are hitting. 
Why did Broken Blade R? Why, why did Broken Blade... He fucking... Broken Blade's fucking trolling, dude. Why did he R Aatrox? If he doesn't R Aatrox there, then he can actually probably Q and R somebody else and get another kill. Q, 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 Q. Because if he... If he Q... Okay, they get him anyway. But he should not have R would Aatrox. So the question is, all this early game proactiveness and pressure, was it enough to truly shut down Han Summer? Level 14, Smolder. Uh, this is crazy. G2 is a thousand gold down. Only. And now they have 225 stacks on Smolder. So just shows how bad Rogue is, guys. A very good shockwave. The funny thing is, this is actually a good team fight from Rogue, but it's just too late because of Smolder. And now you come back and you kind of look at this composition from Rogue. It is about landing that wombo combo. And the reality is from G2, this is... It's got to be Hans getting caught. Yeah, it must be. To just kill in a single shot. And if you don't connect... Can you agree that Smolder is unhealthy for the game? Yes. He's, he's terrible. Alive, he will Thank God they damage. giga nerfed him. Yeah, 4,000 damage from him. The same from Caps. Larson, huge shockwave in the fight, but they just didn't have the follow-up. Importantly, Han Summer wasn't caught in the shockwave, so still... We will not be seeing Smolder in LCK playoffs. It is 14-6 in LCK playoffs, so that is merciful. I underestimated the durability of this uh, G2 composition. Given the lead they had, I, I anticipated that Rogue could just keep forcing these fights, but I was not expecting G2 to just straight-up tank that damage and then just win on the War of Attrition, which is ultimately what these fights now turn into. You would think that with a center on your side, you would be able to match that. The thing is, now they have so much protection for Smolder with Ivern, Karma, right? It's kind of crazy. I mean, it's also positioning around the Drake, right? Like, G2 were able just to push up as a group. Force a flash out. more orientated front-to-back fight, which Rogue do like, but they really want to poke away at... Summer at caps before the fight begins. <laughs> YouTube puts a stream at the top of my feed and then I go to Twitch to watch. You're a Twitch fan, Twitch stream fan, opposed to YouTube. It definitely works in the situation of this game. Zoe Lisa once again caught out a little bit. Broken Blade tanking up the tower, but he's fine. Gets out, has the tunneler built up. Very suitable for Apexi, I guess, that item. Two items on Finn as well, though. The Baron's still available, a thousand gold between these two teams, two and a half minutes on the next Drake. But again, like... Hunt is level 15 right now, he's the same level as Larson and Caps. Yeah, and 293 stacks as well, he just got to that point. Rogue, maybe, their patience, <laughs> what a virtue in this game, but you talked about calling it for the Baron. I don't think... Hunt Twitch chat is better, but YouTube player is much better, greed. You could have forced G2 to invest a few more resources. Now it's G2's vision game as well. Look at look at how few wards there are from Rogue out on the map. There's a couple of control wards from G2. There's a ward behind them. On Seems the very winnable for G2 at this point in time. Like their garbage comp has come online. One ward perhaps behind the Baron pit. It took 25 minutes to do literally anything, but to, to spot G2 as they make these rotations and something that Rogue's comp does really well. Yeah, discoverability on YouTube is pretty shit for streams, but it is what it is. If you get Zoe with a dredge line, that's how they got their lead. They were finding picks on Han Summer on Caps. But without vision, it's so much harder to do that. G2 feel like a very strong wall that Rogue will have to... The problem with YouTube is it refuses to tell me when which channels I like are live. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm trying to get more active on YouTube, even though it's making people unsubscribe from my YouTube. Lots of people unsubscribing because I'm live so much on YouTube now. But it's whatever. It'll all stabilize, I'm sure. Serpent's Fang is such value into the comp. Yeah, it was a good buy from comp here. Serpent's Fang, huge value into G2. People are unsubbing. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. Like, if you're not following League anymore. I also got a bunch of subs when I did Overwatch content on my YouTube. So, 
if you want Overwatch content and all you see now is me live reviewing League of Legends, you probably don't want that, so. I hadn't been using my YouTube channel actively in a long-ass time. Alright, Broken Blade has the build now. He has hysterics. Oh my god, dude. Oh, Rogue actually played that super well. Dude, Serpent's Fang value. Absolutely bonkers. Look at this. I mean, big credit to Comp for buying this. Because, like... Look at this. All of the shields immediately go away, guys. There are no shields. Right? There's there's the Steric shield. But all the shields just melted. Wow. The combo is just so good from Rogue. Finn has a great angle. I mean, he goes into Zoelise here. But the Wombo, see, Marcoon gets the ball on him. He flashes in, stuns Caps, and then that's when the big shockwave comes in. And Finn is also ulting. And he just flashes in with his Q. Yeah. Dude, the, the, that was a great play by Rogue. Like, truly, credit to them. Really good team fight. But you can also see just how small the shields are. Like, remember the shield last game, guys, when we just saw this Rek'Sai? Because he has Sterics and he has Spirit Visage now, so this shield should be... And he has 4,000 HP, so this shield should be fucking massive. But it's only like 500 because of the Serpent's Fang. So the Serpent's Fang value is ab absolutely bananas. Really good job. I think maybe they lose that fight if he, if Comp doesn't have it. The Fang is what negates it. Um, yeah, Senna is a ranged champion, so the Serpent's Fang, when you deal damage to an enemy champion, it puts Venom on there, and if you're a ranged champion, um, it does, it, it cuts shields by 35%. If you're melee, it's 50%. So he's reducing all shields that are gained. Or that he hits by 35%. So it's it's pretty huge when you have, like, a shield build. Um, I mean, it's it, this is a great combo, though. Like, the Volibear ult, too, does a huge amount of damage in the middle of that. It's the combination of the Marcoon Flash Q and then uh, the Volibear ult doing one gazillion damage. Yeah, Caps didn't have Flash, too. So, you know, the Flash, Marcoon with the ball on him. You know, the speed he had with Q plus the ball plus his Flash. He's got right on top of Caps. Marcoon having a very good game. G2 just happy gaming. This is happy gaming, guys. I mean, they almost won this game anyway. That's what's crazy. I think their comp is so garbage, like pre, pre, two twenty five smolder stacks. Like death caps are being worked on for both mid laners. 
Marcoon also got anathemas for the smolder. Rogue's builds are smart this game. This is what we talk about when we say the Baron Force, right? It's not always just about forcing the fight, it's about putting pressure on your opponent. And that's exactly what G2 can do because of the amount of shielding that they have to tank the Baron damage. They get Rogue to walk in. Did they get any ultimates burnt? It doesn't look like it. Oh, they may have got the World oh, Ender. Yeah. But now they can move back towards the Baron. But I think that what they ideally want to do is start putting pressure back towards the bot side of the map because what you can do is you can drag someone from Rogues to go and answer and then you have the TP advantage to then create a numbers advantage over towards the Baron. Yeah, both the side lanes basically neutral right now. Markoon able to get away from the inner flame. He's being rooted up there. Could have been Markoon also intelligently going green smite this game, I think, on the Volibear. So he actually has more tankiness as opposed to blue smite, which you often go on jungle volibear these days not their last of the split cuz they do play tomorrow but the last of their hopes for playoffs Comps I still don't get the iron I don't either I would have rather have seen Kindred or like Eldo in two and a half minutes back. Kindred or uh or Viego look at thing he is no near the fight right now and they have started off this baron not the fastest does Yag play Kindred though I don't know I think it's down to 11000 caps looking for the flank markoon locked up storm bringer away dawning shadow Huge down Sentinel. CC for the moment there's mom Ring ring, the dinner bell for G2. Okay, I got rid of Daisy. So just tanking everything up here. Another route going down as Finn tries to get caps away from the fight. Mickey down to half HP. I mean, they can't do Baron. They're so slow at it. Even Jin Zhao is better. Yeah, I agree. Really hate the Iron. Ultimately, only a flash burn from Mickey there. Ignite was also used. Everything still up for Rogue outside of the TP. Elder spawns in two minutes. Getting closer and closer to being an important point, was not expecting this game to come down to this. With the lead that Rogue had, it felt like that this was their game to lose. G2 found a single great fight around the bot side river, around that fourth dragon spawn, where they turned it around, and then it felt like it was G2's game, and then Rogue finds the wombo combo that they needed, and now we're in a bit of a stalemate. This game could very easily swing either way. The Smolder continues to scale up. Death Cat finished now for Larson. Caps still a bit off. I think Rogue, Rogue needs a new coach because their players haven't been awful. I mean, Freddy has been a very good coach over the course of his career, so not sure about that one. They have N-rated there, too. I, I don't think this is a coaching problem. The real problem is their roster just keeps getting worse. You know, like... We don't have Odo, we don't have Inspired, we don't have Trimby. Like, they, they just downgrade their roster. Then just has to time it right. The Baron is very low. Mickey going in. There's Daisy to join the party. Broken Blade rooted up with the last embrace. Finn shows. Cap sees him. World Ender in. Marcus nice line from Finn. Shockwave as well as they kill off Yike. Cap is chased off towards the top side as Mickey dies onto the back line. The Cap is down. And Rogue found it. The fight they wanted this whole split. They found it. Finally, they keep their life alive in playoffs. They should I just have no damage. Join the party. Broken Blade rooted up with the last embrace. I mean, they're all just in this tunnel right now. So they line up for Senna ult. They're also lined up for Shockwave. They're lined up for Not ult. Rogue's team fight setup's been good, but their comp is also just gratuitously strong. I mean, in this meta, it shouldn't be possible to first rotation Oriana Senna Nautilus on blue side. Like, that's illegal. He's going to delay this as much as he can, but they still have minions available to them. The TP catch from Larson, he's going to force him back. 
Gonna have to tunnel away to safety. Rogue have the Nexus in their eyes. Another incredible fight. Why aren't we seeing more Juggermaw with Smolder? Uh, well, I mean, we've seen G2 play Kogma, not Juggermaw, but Kogma into Smolder and win. stuff rogue only a single fight they really lost around that bot drake i was concerned at that point that han summer would really unleash better what a shit comp though from g2 just like you can't do anything in the early game all right what garbage are we on to next guys carmine corp versus heretics oh goody Size a month and then come back after that, right? The MSI is a month and then come back after that, right? So it's a while before we'll see the two bottom place teams of Spring back on our stages. Draven, a volley bear, and Barris banned away by Common Court, Vi, and Smolder. <coughs> uh, removed by Heretics. Okay, so what is the final bang going to be, Callista? Okay, nothing too surprising. The priority. It's Draven, Volley, Varus, okay. No Smolder, it's interesting. Oh, alright, because there's no Smolder, we just first pick Zeri and, and dare Trimby and Flacket to actually stop us. So we give up Oriana Senna for a first pick Zeri? Holy shit, this is... Guys, Yamato was the problem. Yamato was the problem. That bastard. He would have... He, he would have never done the Giga Brain trade of blue side first pick Zeri trading Ori and Senna. This is a genius draft. Genius. Genius. Fucking genius. They better pick not here. If they don't pick not, they are trolling. They are trolling. Nautilus? Do not give them Nautilus on R3. Do not give them Nautilus on R3. We're playing Yasuo into Karma. Okay, we're just going to block her empowered cues with Windwall. They, surely they don't just get Nautilus for free here, right? Nautilus? What are we doing? Okay, so what they're doing here is they are taking the Karma Olaf that we talked about, but they don't actually know their top lane matchup. Good into, you know... What they're trying to do is Jarvan the Senna or make the Senna's life hell or the Oriana's life hell because they can't actually get out of Jarvan ult without expending Flash. So we're just going to take Nar. Very intriguing. So it's a Yasuo bot lane, actually. We got bamboozled, guys. It was actually R5 flex. Ah. Size a month and then come back after that, right? So it's a while before we'll see. Sorry about that. The two bottom place teams of spring back on our stage. Ah, uh. and Barris has looked towards the all right. So it was actually a Yasuo flex, but he can still block empowered cues. And we're gonna play Flack, it's gonna play Yasuo with Senna because Senna's gonna be fasting, so Yasuo gets all the farm. Uh, we have good setup here for Yasuo ult. Neganar, Nar ult sets it up. Shockwave sets it up, right? Huge amounts of engage and hard CC. Uh, Zeri is going to have a hard time staying alive in this bot lane. Zeri Rakan seems really terrible into a Yasuo that's constantly getting healed by Senna. 
Not really Yasuo, but Orianna. When these champions don't have their flashes, they're very susceptible to this dive. Um, the Asso, though, is going to be super interesting to watch. Windwall can be great as an answer into Karma because you can mitigate a lot of her potential to murder as well. I think opposite elves, a win here would be so valuable for them. And yes, Seju Q if they lose triggers the Yasuo. Yes, yes, it, yes, it does because it's a knockback. 25% of scenarios left for them. Upset getting a ward in the bush down here. Carmen Core going to take the long way round to avoid vision, then they'll path up through that tri bush. Placard waiting here. Okay, Casey trying to get bot lane priority and prevent them from getting all in early. This one as the Demacian standard goes down. And uh, Carmen Core will just start to retreat. Togmas likely just to get a ward over towards this blue buff, make sure they have any vision on Yankos as he goes through his path. No deep ward yet placed by Heretics. I wondered if Wonder would step in there and get one on the blue, but they have one on the red, so they kind of know where Bo is. Am I if you think that it might shift? I actually think it, the. The Heretics bot lane might be able to get the push. You've got Piercing Dark, you've got Yasuo as well, who can just walk up to the lane and use that wind ball that he talks about and use his shield that regenerates Starting through the fight. E. Sometimes Yasuo yeah, starts E. I, I, I think you get the push if you're Heretics. It Starting depends how aggressively Targumus and Upset can play, because Targumus can sack health for the wave, but obviously also depends on who gets there first. Uh, very easy to win the push in the bot lane if you are there. Uh, before your opponent. So we'll, we'll have a look down there as the lane does Yeah, it does look like that they are getting the, the early push. Yeah. So I think just Senna has the range. Yasuo also has pseudo range with his Q, right? True. So it, it's, it's hard for Zeri to answer. It's Rakan just can't do much. Yeah. Like, you, you can walk up and Q right. them and then like <laughs> flip, flip, flip your feathers at <laughs> yeah. them a little bit, but it doesn't really do too much. Yeah, it's often usually when it comes to priority in the bot lane, uh, it's usually determined more so by the support than yeah. it is necessarily the AD carry. There are exceptions to that, obviously, but... Uh, but old, old days is guess what I would call it. I remember when he was originally on Vitality back in 2016 top lane. Uh, I remember he used to play a decent amount of all off back then. I think he played it even earlier, but truth be told, I, my memory of Cabo back then is very limited. He played it in 2015 EU LCS Spring Promotions. Gambit versus Mouse Sports. Yeah, I thought he qualified to the LEC Good. in uh, 2016. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he went into the he played one game in ULCS Spring 2016, and then uh, I think he just got subbed off a roster or something. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, when it came back in summer. So, for the moment, he's getting the push in the top lane, kind of to be expected with the undertow. You can just use that through the wave, and you can chunk out Wonder. Meanwhile, Trimby and Flacket pushing in this a bot lane. So just. <laughs> trying to catch the minions as they crash. He's done a good job of farming yeah, so He's done far. a very good job of farming. Right? That, that's one of the, the strengths of the Zoe. It's not actually too much Bo. threat on you as Bo. Looks towards the top lane. Wonder jumps away. Oh. Bo flashes, but he misses the knockup. Bo's going to take an extra two. Bo still gets the kill. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Yeah, the flash doesn't quite go the way that Bo wants it, but it doesn't matter. Cabo gets the kill. And, and it's a wave lost as well. Casey off to a good start with first blood. Good pressure being put down by Cabo. They waited a long time to take turret aggro there. Single creep off. He was very, very close indeed. But uh, they make it work. Very nice dive from Casey. Wonder TP's back up to the top lane there. Cabochard running the ghost in the TP. So as the wave pushes into him, doesn't have to burn that summoner. Yankos was looking, aiming down towards his bottom side. Targamus lands the knockup, but Flackhead's looking for that steel tempest. Puts the wind wall down and it's the power of Yasuo. Has that lethal tempo propped up as well. Argument's battle dancing back but was interrupted and then has to use the second proc of it. I mean, this is the frustrating thing with uh, Yasuo's. They they can just keep hitting you. <laughs> the the Q auto reset is just so annoying to deal with. And uh, nice little knock up there from Flackett, expecting Targumus to actually dash to the to his ally yeah. and he interrupts it on the way. But fortunately for Targumus, he has the second one, so he ends up getting away to safety. It's a little bit like Bard Q in that respect. Like one of the reasons that Bard can be nice into a Khan is you just chuck the Q at the AD carry. And it's like, okay, you're going to dash to him or you're just going to take more auto attacks? Because those are your two options in this case. Uh, so Flackett finding a good knock up there. Just chunk out Targumus. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Zyru on the receiving end of a push from Saken, but on is even pretty much that. First big Zeri, dude. I can't handle first big Zeri. Heretics. So stupid. Especially on blue side, holy shit. Overall though, very even start to the game with a small advantage of Casey on the top side of the map. Love that we see this proactiveness from Bo. Unsurprisingly, Yankos just prioritizing farm for now. Getting what vision he can to help his team out. Bo can EQ across this wall, dodge the vision. This way Wonder has no wards. flash. They have information on where Yankos is. He's gonna get here too late though. I mean, Wonder is starting to get away from- Is he gonna get here too late? Yankos gonna join the fray. Double bounce from Wonder, but he's killed. 
Trimby's here. Alright, they're gonna get multiple kills onto Cabo. Okay. The boar is skewered by Carmine Core. Really nice pathing there from Bo. He's able to navigate through the vision. Wonder goes for a trade against Cabo. He's trying to push this wave underneath the tower. And then Bo just runs towards him. They see that Sejuani is on their way. They also don't know that his uh, Jarvan's EQ is down from going to that brush. Immediately moves up to, into the river to help his team, guaranteeing a numbers advantage. First, Yankos is forced to flash away from his mid laner. Trimby tries his best to help, but it's not enough. And KC secure themselves two kills. Now Cabo is getting unleashed. 2 0 1 so far in the early game. The coach remains composed for now. We've seen KC get early leads before. The question is can they convert it into a victory? Good start, though, with a 1k goal lead. Three kills to nil, two grubs to nil. They're in a strong position. I'm seeing a lot of this take two grubs and then back away from... Uh, More Swiffer team. suffering. The team can't get the mites, can't get a five stack, even if they did the remaining four. So you just stop them having that little bit of extra push pressure. Also helps with dives, actually. Might spawn and can tank a couple of tower shots for you. That means that you can dive even when you don't have a wave there to help out. Yanko spotted again. Clears out. Uses the oracles to spot that ward. Uh, it's not loading for me. Sorry, has started the Drake, and uh, Heretics with their push in the bot lane should be able to take. Oh, there it is. Good. We'll use it. I added it. Thanks, Latvian guy. Teams, kind of what we often see in terms of neutral objectives. So funny. Early game. KC leveraging their strong top side. Not typically. That is truly the face of suffering. That was one of the worst games I've ever seen of League of Legends. Just commit to all inning. And Bo just did a really good job in this early game of playing around Cabo to enable him to do just that. Despair no jutsu. He's trying to like Vulcan mind meld with with his team right there. That's what he's trying to do, guys. He's trying to execute a Vulcan mind meld with his players so they stop being idiots. The advantage of having Yasuo in many AD carry matches is that you can farm relatively safely. The disadvantage is that you're not going to have this ranged carry threat, which is largely coming from Zvyro, but you need to find those committal, those hard ends. You have to give him access into the fight um, to really get things going. Now, All right, we're winning top side. We got grubs. There will be a small window to get six grubs potentially. Support role is going to delay those stacks a little bit and also uh, those items. It's really dependent on how well Trimby can farm his Absolution Fragments, right? Absolution Sacks. He's at 37 already, following the jungle around, just leaving Yasuo in that bot lane matchup 1v1. Which Yasuo will, will navigate very handily. Upset here. Could look for the Lightning Crash, but sides against him. This is the Ultra Shock Laser, so doesn't get the slow. Trimby was working his way down towards the bottom side as well. He's going to continue to get stacks from the jungle here. But, uh, this is what you see great centers do, is just really min-max how many stacks you're getting. Sometimes you do have to come cover your lane. You can see Trimby coming down here now. The wave is pushing in towards Flackard and Trimby, so maybe they can maintain a freeze here for a little bit, which would give Trimzy, Trimby more stacks. But with Targamus coming across, Flackard maybe just called for a little bit of help as Cabochard proxying this wave. Well, at least keeping Wonder away from his own tower. Cannon lost. Yeah. The minus, minus ones one. are going to be spammed in chat. No wonder has been on the receiving end of this throughout his entire career, though, like so often left on the weak side by his team. Do you think Heretics can do any damage in playoffs? I mean, I think they're pretty good. Pushing towards them, so they can just wait for that to crash towards their tower and catch it as it comes in. Doing a really good job in this 2v2. Credit to them. The center just offering that range and poke to make it hard for them to really answer. 44 stacks. This Yasuo has been really good in the bot side. It's like a funny pick. This is a, a good enough chunk for now. Obviously, I think the... Just lose every trade. You try and go in. Push, create pressure, take drakes. We have seen Trimby utilizing his jungle well to just oh Yankos's jungle technically, but kind of Trimby's, you know, all those souls there to be harvested by. They'll probably bring back perks for playoffs though. Hashtag perks for playoffs. Found him make a successful gank here. He did try to go top to cover for Wonder. Obviously, it ended up not going quite the way that he wanted. But he's in a pretty good spot right now. Knight's about already completed. You've told Let's you start a movement, guys. Of this item in pro play specifically. The fact that you can constantly shift it on perks the for hours, playoffs. Depending on the circumstances. Sixty second cooldown just means if you're only ganking once a minute, just switch it on to someone when you go into the lane. Yankos yet to put it on anyone. 
It's also just a nice spike, right? Mm -hmm. Nice, relatively cheap. Can grab that pretty early on. Finds himself just more gold deficit for now, but on this tank Sejuani, that's not too big of a deal. Malignant's finished for the Karma. It's a pretty big deal for Staken. Sets him up nicely as we get closer to the next Dragon spawn. The good news for Heretics is given that they've already secured the first one, they're probably uh, not too concerned about having to fight for this. Perks probably is an upgrade over Saken on Carmine Corp. Perks at least knows how to put Sand Soldiers and Choke Points on his ear. What I like a lot about Casey is what we talked about in the draft is the amount of backline threat they have. How do you stop this Olaf just running your Oriana down, yeah. you know? And then the Rakan, he has very easy access because Jarvan EQ into ult, right? There's just a lot of threats onto the back line that provide a lot of space for upset to play. And then also, he's just not the singular damage threat. Saken has a decent amount of poke, but also Cabo Shard, yeah. as long as he's got someone with him, he can be a huge asset on the front line, especially if that Karma is actually playing for him. Mm -hmm. Goes back to the old Jugger Olafs that we've seen in the past, where we saw yeah, Jungle Olaf. Ever since we saw that, yeah. And then Lulu support, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes they even used to be Lulu mid. Do you remember yep. that? And One of the most satisfying bits of farming I've ever seen was a triple stack wave under a tower, and a Lulu just glitter lanced them all, and you <laughs> saw the gold. But we hopefully never want to see that again, yeah, because true. Lulu mid was not a fun time, Medic. <laughs> <laughs> Just get her out of support. That's all I really care about. Uh, uh, interesting decision making from Carmine Court. They see their bot lane getting pushed in, so they actually took another round of grubs. Uh, they took the, the third one of the setup, so we're going to have grubs spawn again in two seconds. I wonder if Carmine Court, if they don't see anything really proactive that they can do on the bottom side, maybe just give up this Drake, accept that you're losing two dragons because you can't find the engage, your bot lane's constantly getting pushed in, and just go for three, you know, six grubs. Does give you a bit more threat on towers as the game. I, I don't know why Carmine Corp is so ups obsessed with like getting French players. France has a proud tradition of just getting foreigners to fight their wars for them. That's what the French Foreign Legion was, guys. Why don't they just recruit a bunch of not French people and then just give them French citizenship when they win the LEC? They'll be the French Foreign Legion of of European League of Legends team. Everybody will be French eventually, guys. You earn your citizenship through service. So I support the future French people. I should probably save this material for SI, guys. Grand entrance, last embrace with the root, Trimby Flacken and Zyru. It's actually only one kill so far for KC as they've only taken out Yankos, but that means the jungler is dead. Zyru flashes to the help of his team. Targum is an upset force down towards the bottom side of the fight. Trimby chasing onto Saken. Kabashar misses the undertow and gets knocked up, locked up in the piercing dark. We'll find its mark. Heretic. Flash. The grand entrance, last embrace with the root. Cataclysm, but he finds has that control ward down to. Do they do they offer do they offer citizenship to the football players in France <laughs> to get them onto the French national team? Is that what happens? I mean, Trimby just no threat onto this back line. Oh, nice route. With the route, Trimby Flacken and Zyru. It's actually only one kill so far for KC as they've only taken out Yankos, but that means the jungler is dead. Zyru flashes to the help of his team. Targum so I just actually loop around and come back to the Drake, and now Cabo doesn't have ult, so he can't do anything. And they don't keep track of Senna ult, so they have no idea that it's up. Heretics take the Drake off the Carmine Core, killed the enemy jungle. Crazy back and forth. Dragon ends up being secured by Heretics. Well, Caliste is a French ADC. It's almost 18, super popular in France. Yeah, it seems like uh, seems like Caliste, from what I've heard. I haven't seen him play, but seems like he's going to be good. They collapse as four, engage gun to three. The TP then comes in from Cabo Shard. A little late from Wanda, but the flash shot from Trimzy puts him in a safe spot. And then a quick flash from Flacket after they find that initial kill. Yankos, though, left isolated on the front line means that he then drops in return. It then becomes this poke battle back and forth where Casey's doing a good job. They think they've locked down Zviro, forcing him to flash away. But now you look at the positioning. Upset doesn't really have any mana to continue to fight. They're going the long way around. And then Cabo, I think he just overforced this fight. He thought that he could go in, but that's forcing him to flash away. Yeah, Cabo's like, oh, I don't have ult anymore. He then drops in return. It then becomes this poke battle back and forth where Casey's doing a they didn't, I also think they didn't realize that the Senna ult was still up here. Like, you actually can't do this 
forced this fight. He thought that he could go in, but that's four members versus one. They end up getting a kill, and Heretics end up winning the fight overall. Two kills to one, and a dragon as well for Heretics. It's a mountain soul for them. Will help a lot. France gave Joel Embed citizenship to play for France in the Olympics in basketball, and he dipped to play for the USA. Yeah, because he wanted to win, probably. So, Casey did lose that initial fight, but you now have to keep your eyes on Summoners, because the reason why Zaviro lived was because he could flash away from the Olaf. The reason why Flackhead lived was because he could flash away from the Zeri. The fact that they don't have those anymore means that it's going to be a much harder fight for Heretics to take. And I wonder if they'll actually just try to... All right, so Targamas has Flash. They should be able, as they're say, as the cast are saying right now, get on top of Oriana and Senna, but they need to actually get into a fight, right? The thing is, is that there's no objectives to play for. So if Heretics is smart, they should just play back and farm up safely until they can actually go for soul point on drake and at which time their flashes will be back up again pushing out that mid wave it's going to be trimby and flacket to match zyro going down towards the bottom side and wonder up towards top so kind of symmetrical lanes with mid laner being mid laner but zyro he spots Bo, still gets knocked up. There's the quickness as well. Targamas looking for the knock-up afterwards. Shockwave comes out. Targamas still chasing forward. Yankos, facial prison, but Targamas unable to tank it in time. The Cataclysm back onto the back line from Bo, but he's left for dead. Targamas couldn't eat the glacial prison. And because of that, Bo pays with his... But Targamas unable to be mid lane of his rival. He spots Bo, still gets... Doesn't actually matter if he dies right here. ...as well. Targamas looking for the knock-up afterwards. Shockwave comes out. Targamas still chasing forward. Yankos, facial prison, but Targamas unable to tank it in time. The Cataclysm back onto the back line from... All right, Bo dies, though. So they get a kill even though they don't have anything because we're trying to make picks without the Zeri. They have no damage. It was just Targamas and Bo thinking that they had caught Zviro out, but the rest of KC was not in a position to collapse themselves, so Heretics get themselves a punish. And we said maybe Heretics just want to play a little bit more passively. Well, it was KC on the front foot, and it was Heretics finding the kill out of it. A thousand gold lead now for them. Heretics trying to extend that by stealing away some of these camps. Trimby and Flash. All right, so we're going to have Flashes back up for the Soul Point fight. It's not that easy. There's a lot of stacking on top to threaten that top tier one. So we don't get, we actually don't get any flashes. So now Flat Kids, Wairu, and Trimby all have their flashes back up just in time for this next fight. Of course they do. So flashes are up now. It's spawning and Wonder is Mega. He, has he megas a little early though. Targamas is only level seven for some reason. Trimby's level nine. Why is Targamas level seven at 19 minutes into this game? Okay, Wonder has his Rage Bar building again. Cabo actually ghosts, but he's scared. All right, so we get on top of them, but there's no follow-up. Cabo isn't there. Nice! Nar, all oh, right into the Yasuol. Jesus Christ, oh, it's Massacre. So, this is really weird because it's like a mixed call. So, Targamas actually flashes in here. He actually just goes in with his ult. Like, he flashes in, 
and Bo is looking for the engage right here, but I mean the the ult does nothing because there's no follow up. Cabochard decides he's gonna run away instead of just popping ult. They let Wonder get his Narbar back up. Bo then flashes in, gets three people, Flacked, Yankos, and Zwiru. But again, there's no follow-up damage. He EQs out of the pit to stop Trimby. But Wonder's able to flash in himself and just Meganar. Right? So you used Rakan ult and Jarvan ult to not get anything. Fucking terrible team fighting. Like, they're all on the different page. Like, Targamas is just like... Like, Targamas just, like, goes in. Randomly. And it looks like Kabashar is trying to follow up, but he doesn't actually commit to this. So, Targamas just leaves. They go in. There's no actual follow-up damage. Where, where was Wyru's ult? It was right there. Where's this? Where's the ball? Oh, the ball's right here. Yeah, so he actually gets a two man ult, which then Wonder uses to. Just jump in and hit his own ult. That's so badly played. That's so badly played by Carmine Corp. That is fucking terrible. Dude, Yamato was the problem. Great fight for Heretics. They do lose the dragon. By firing Yamato, they fix the fact that they can't actually communicate and engage. Dude, F Vetti, flame the shit out of these guys. I want to see Zvira on way. He throws this shockwave. The ball placement on the back line. Then goes to shield Flackhead. They're trying to find access into the fight. Good engage initially from... Oh, but there's the shockwave onto the back. There's a shockwave into Gnarled, into Yasuo ult. It's almost like Team Heretics knows how to pull off a combo, and Carmi Corp is very confused. And being trapped into that choke makes it that much harder to execute. We talked at the start of this game, ultimately how it's going to boil down. And uh, Heretics, they were able to get all their summoners back up again. They find another great fight. That engage from Bo initially looks promising, but if they have an ability to get out of it, then they're going to get out. Yep, and they do exactly that. Even though Bo's able to cataclysm in, the back line was just shredded, as you say. Shockwave and then R into the wall, followed up by Flackhead. A Rabadon's death cap second for Z Zviro. Flackhead's Zviro. More of a support than anything this game. 1-0, zero, uh, zero, one, seven. Hasn't really been picking up the kills, but still a lot of damage to his name. Quickness in once again. There's the knockup with the cataclysm going forward. Targum is doing everything he can. All right, so they got Trimby, but they had to use everything. Gets the knockup with the last breath, but I don't think it's going to be enough as Flackhead dies forward. The shockwaves are... The oh, my God. Flackhead... Oh, God. The Nar isn't even here yet. The Nar's coming. The Nar's coming. The shut down, down, the grand entrance All right, triple kill. Mega Nar. Yeah, you, you, you don't want that. He's about to go mini. I, that's finally a good pick for them. That's how these fights should be looking, guys. See, now they actually are able to combo the Rakan ult into the Jarvan ult with Olaf. And you'll see he drops the Jarvan ult immediately just so the Olaf can charge through. This is how this team fight should look. But it just didn't look like that last fight for I have no idea what reason. I don't understand why they couldn't execute that same play at the Drake. And they just went in one by one doing nothing.
huge acceleration for the Zevi there as well. And you can see the difference between having summoners and not having summoners for Heretics. If they have summoners in that fight, you flash away from the initial and get himself a triple kill. <laughs> huge acceleration for the Zevi there as well. And you can see the difference between... I love that. We got to show the coaches. And then we found the, we found the cute, excited grill. We found cute grills in the audience, guys. So we got to show cute grills. The quickness has landed, and you are in a much stronger position. Two items now on upset Runans and Static Shiv. Two items that Classic are production. Out. Find cute really grills, put them on camera. For KC. But really, Heretic should have just tried to cross that. They should have been fine abandoning that tower. I guess the argument is that there weren't really many of the towers for them to cross map four, so they wanted to try and contest, but I guess they weren't expecting so many members of KC to be there. Either way, kill scores 9 to 9. The gold is about two diff 2k difference. I still think this game could swing either way, especially given how strong Upset is right now. A full level over Flackhead. And the dance around the Baron already beginning. Yeah, a minute early. on the Drake, but wouldn't be sold by the team. Obviously, Carmine Cook getting the last one delayed. Heretic sold by five minutes. Crucially, objective bounties are available. So. That might not seem like a big deal. <coughs> it is a big deal. Like, but, like, it's, it's, it's a really surprising <laughs> with the Well, the it's because in terms of structures, there's such a massive difference. Two dragons, three towers, like... A dragon, three grubs, only 2,000 gold between the two teams. I mean, I'm I mean, just I trying to explain it, Medic. Yeah, I, 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 I understand your explanation. I'm just saying it surprises me slightly that with only a 2,000 gold difference between the two teams, there's objective bounties available. But for Carmine Corp, that's a great, great situation I mean, if in. they got Baron, it would, like, balloon them ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So right now, Heretics is waiting for their flashes to be up again. Remember that these flashes are all super important. And they've basically been synced the entire game for Heretics. But they've been doing a good job of only using sums on objectives, which has been the big difference maker, guys. You know, as good as that fight was for Carmine Corp, they only get fights when there's nothing to take in this game. And so... You know, now that we're talking about the Drake again, possible Baron, like, now's the time those flashes are going to be up when it really matters. Of course. Target's going for the flank. It's Drake up in 10 seconds. Target could sneak around the back here. He's cleared out the vision. Heretics realize this. They come around. They make sure the target is not lying in wait. Good due diligence there. No, they're really making sure. I mean, you have to. Because if Target's, like, in the in the bush by the Gromp or something, he can just flank you, and you are absolutely spotted doomed. He's him. spotted on the ward, uh, on the turret. Now forced down towards the bottom side of the fight. Heretics can just look for Targamus here. Why, like why is Targamus on a flank? He can just flank you, and you are absolutely spotted doomed. He's spotted on the ward, uh, on the turret. Now forced down towards the bottom side of the fight. Heretics can just look for Targamus here. Isolate the engage. Who cares if you... All right, yeah, they blew his, they blew his ult, so they don't care anymore. Now he's useless. Really good due diligence from Heretics. Cabochard also is catching bot wave. Carmine Core wisely did this up. Cabochard was not close enough. You didn't have a TP flank. Carmine Core, a couple of pings towards the Baron. Maybe Heretics look for it on the resets. Yeah, I mean, Casey definitely slowed to that objective. Bit of a blunt. Give up the dragon, you fought you, and you are absolutely spotted doomed. He's it. spotted on the ward, uh, on the turret. Yeah, Wonders at 50% Narbar, too, so he's really dangerous to walk in. Yeah, he's mega. Yeah, really good timing on that Nar transformation by Wonder. Okay, they got they got the Drake without actually having to use any of their sums. They were very reliant on the flank from Targumus. Cabot obviously had the TP to join should a fight break out, but that fight was denied the moment that they sniffed it out. You call it medic, really good awareness from Heretics. They don't allow the flank to happen. And now we turn to a more neutral state. Two the initial engage will happen. Heretics will flash away. Then does the secondary engage find enough Heretics members that you can kill them with upset and well, with, and with uh, Saken, right? It comes back to a similar story of the G2 versus Rogue match from earlier, which is that when it comes to any Wombo combo, you just either you either have to survive it or you have to dodge it, yep. right? Because that's the bulk of their damage. That's how this comp ultimately designed to work. That's not to say that they can't keep doing damage afterwards, but when you have Karma Zeri, you think in a war of attrition, they should have an advantage just because of their range. Actually, the plot of the Matrix as well. Initially, he dodged the bullets and then he just survived them. True. So, Bo, though, caught out, didn't Wait, use the what? device. He's to get away. Have an advantage just because of their range. Actually, the plot of the Matrix as well. Initially, he... It's a nice cancel by Yankos using Q. And, and Bo doesn't feel like flashing, I guess. He'd rather just lose Baron. Wait, what? They should have an advantage. 
damage just because of their range. Actually, the part of the Matrix as well. Initially, he dodged the bullets, and then he just survived them. True. So, Bo, though, caught out. Did yeah, it's actually uh, the shockwave that triggers the Yasuo ults there. So, because he doesn't flash. No chance to move. That's a Baron unlock for sure for Heretics. Kabashar coming in from the side as well. They do still have the engage of Targamus and Kabashar running onto that I think with the Yasuo, they just melt this, no? Ariana Yasuo? They Yasuo's? haven't spotted Target yet. They do melt it, Betty. You're entirely correct on that. But Target now spotted on a ward. Can be forced off towards the top side. There's the TP in by Wonder. He's built up that Meganar bar. Targamus still. Okay, just... Kabashar goes in. Targamus flashes in. All right, nice charm. Okay, okay, they get into the back line. It's looking okay. Oh, the stopwatch cucks him. Nice stopwatch. They got trolled by Armguard. Yeah, it did look good. Because Nars here kind of kind of late, honestly. He was trying to build Narbar in the bot side. And so this is the combo. You know, the Jarvan isn't here, but getting the Olaf ulting with Ghost plus the charm into the back line isn't terrible, right? Yeah, Trimby does a good job of setting up his angle. Trimby plays this really well. He gets out, able to get the Senna ult. Stopwatch goes off. Flacid, able to flash out. This is where having all those sums up really matters. Right. And they can't, they just can't get enough damage onto Flacid. And Flacid's able just to orb walk his way out and kill the Olaf. He's just gonna, in a, in a long enough fight, he's gonna be able to turn that one around. J4 Olaf is fine here. It's good. It's good at killing Oriana and, uh, and Senna. Especially with the Karma. They're just bad at executing it, and Bo got picked off. Four members of his team that are up here. One left in they didn't show the cute grills getting sad after that Baron was taken. I'm just dis deeply disappointed. Tarnish, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub. If you're going to show the cute grills, you got to show them being sad too. That's the rule. On this second tier two. Oh, nice shockwave on the second. Might just be dead. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. My brain is broken. Every time Casey is losing, my mind immediately goes, Ah, the French. <laughs> why why does E buy look like drunk Orson Wells? The world may never know. How much longer will Carmine Corp be dancing? The battle dance out to upset gets him to safety. Double cannon minions will chip away at this tower. Trimby will do the same. They'll wait for the next wave to come in, and this will be an inhibitor tower broken by heretics. Slackhead is a good Yasuo player. Yeah, he I is. mean, <laughs> he has only won two of his five games on the stage with it, but looking to make it three of six. That was uh, that was impressive what he just did there. I mean, because I thought that they had gone in way too deep. <laughs> Double cannon minions will upset ch getting chased out by Wallens on this second tier two. Oh, nice shockwave on the oh, second. Might just be dead. Dawning Shadow is Wow. Yanko's actually just flashes in on him. Oh, nice shockwave on the oh, second. Might just be dead. Dawning Shadow. He just flashes in with EW flashes on top of him. I think he cues him after that. Oh, yeah, he cues him, which triggers the Yasuo ult. Lol. Lol. Any news on the next Into the AM sale? Uh, it will come this coming weekend. We'll do announcements on some of our shows this week. But there will be a sale this weekend for Into the AM. Ah, the French. Well, I need to. I need to soundboard that, guys. 
his five games on the stage with it, but looking to make it three of six. <laughs> I'll, I'll soundboard that. I'll soundboard that for you guys. Ah, oh, the French, so we can have it. You greeted, you dived, you didn't need to. Just getting Saken's HP that low is enough, yep. right? Because now he's forced back. The wave clear is gone. You don't need this kill. So Maybe somebody has already done it. Hold up. Yankos flashes in. Flak is there to support. And at this point, I'm thinking he's dead. A really nice win. All right, this might be loud. This is your warning, guys. This might. Be, I do not know how loud this is going to be when I play it. Ah, the French champagne. <laughs> Space between him and upset, and then he isolates Cabo to deal enough damage alongside his mid laner to then get a kill as well. Um, that was clean, yeah. Flacker. That was Very clean. Nice. Good job as well by Yankos. Flash Arctic Assault, Flash Q on the Z1. Well, that the was the part knockout. that I thought was greedy, Medic. No, uh, I mean, he got the knock of a core, right? There's no way he does that without Flacker saying, I I'll, I'll, I'll deal with this. There's definitely a degree of I'll deal with this once this game is over, guys. I have to get, I have to get Audacity out. Arlenek, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub. You appreciate the creativity I add to this stream with my fun soundboards. Not like the rest of these gutter plebs who refuse to subscribe even with their free Bezos bucks. Heretic's boat pays for the attempt with his life, and now bot lane the target for Heretic's as they can push this in. No Baron on them. That pleb mode is absolute fire, by the way. It's so good. It looks like Carmine Court are just gonna try and push out their waves in the other lanes. Mid their first prio can't get up towards top in time. Cabo Shard will go and answer that himself. It's so funny because the way when you stack it up, the way Atan made it, when you stack up the plebs together. It like roll the plebs like all roll together and it looks like it's transferring from one box to the next. Calm on me. Thank you, my erudite friend, for not being a pleb. That was all Trimby Even all through the, the ultimate, time. just to secure it as well. 150 stacks on the center at 30 minutes. And now the Nexus towers the target. The flash <laughs> Trimby just flashes oh, away from Tr Targamas' is engaged. Trimby is having an absolute purple patch as Heretics are looking to beat Carmine Corp. Purple make it into playoffs. All right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that into... Uh, I, I need to hold up. Let me download this. It'll take me two seconds to do this. I have to open up Audacity. And then I got to import this file. I'm going to cut off the champagne bit. Hold up. Hold up. No, I don't want it to open. Okay. So. Hold on. Let's cut off the front of it. Ah, the French champagne. Okay, I think we can just cut off the end of this here. Should just be this. Ah, the French. Ah, oh, the French. All right, we'll fade it out at the end. Sorry, guys, if I don't do it now, I'm just going to forget, so suck it up. You want it? This is how you get it. I'm going to fade it in, too. Okay, let's see how this works. Ah, the French. There we go. We did it, guys. All right, let me export. Ah, sure. You can be. Uh, ah, the French. Dot wave. Okay. All right, let me add it to Stream Deck. Hold up. Don't don't tell me I never do anything nice for you guys. Uh, gotta get in my Dropbox. Oh, I have saved it there automatically. I'm so smart. All right. Uh, we'll put it here. Media source control. 
Is that what I want? What is this? Soundboard, play audio. Okay, that's what I want. We'll call this one French. I'm gonna turn down the volume on it a little bit. It's like a little too loud. Uh, oh, volume's already at 50%. All right, cool. All right, guys, here we go. Tell me how this sounds. Ah, the French. There we go. Now we have drunk Orson Welles. The dream. KC voice comms. All right, here we go. Notre bataille pour les playoffs. Our battle for the playoffs. Wow, they, they make it sound so dramatic. How about you just battle not to be complete shit? Notre bataille pour les merde. No flash, no flash. <laughs> the gum chewing. I blaze, thank you. LEC Despair, thank you for your resubscription. Uh, Monty, which Kia do you have? I have a Sorento. You're considering the EV6? I've heard good things about the, the EV9. I, I, I like my Sorento, though. Kia, please sponsor me. Thank you. Ah, yes, the Nautilus, the diving, the farm Nautilus game. Well, they send an ult from across the map and then we all die under turret. Maybe I die too. It was not fine. I'm looking my dash. Yeah, don't stack with me, guys. I don't have flash even. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Nick, six. I'm rolling no flash, okay? Yeah, you, yeah, guys, you guys just, just go first. Yeah, no, they're hard. completely fucked. Yeah, I, just I mean, hard. I don't want to just go there first. To get it really, I push top top. How do you want to play it, guys? No, I have not. No, he's not flashing. Just kill him. Don't go too much. Don't finish him. Don't finish him. Yeah, yeah. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Dude, the fucking Urgot game. This game is so troll. Oh, dude, they got Malphite ult in the end. Now the Viego resets. Oh, God. He, he could not kill Ari. Oh, Viego troll. This is where uh, this is where Viego trolls. Marcoon just trolls by walking into that brush. I remember this game. This game was terrible. The dreaded Urgot flank. Everybody was so scared of the Urgot flank. Yeah, actually, Zonia is the fear there from the Urgot ult. <laughs> Henry934, thank you for your resubscription. Yeah, the chewing is so bad, guys. Would you guys, would you guys, uh, would you guys like it if I did that on my stream? Yeah, 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 we can follow. I'm going, I'm going. Yeah, I'm looking. 
Nautilus. Look, look, arrière, 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 arrière. Allez, allez, allez. Aren't mukbangs popular in Korea? Yeah, but you don't chew with your mouth open like a fucking animal. Alright, I heard this BDS versus MDK game was really bad, so we're gonna watch it for fun. It's just raccoon feeding day, guys. This is all we got. All we got are raccoon trash. Hysterics? What is a mukbang? How do you not know? How could you not... Hysterics, how could you not possibly know that? So they want to win this game. Mad Lions Koi yet to lock. Looks like we're gonna have kind of a battle royale between Giant X, SK, Carmine Core, Mad Lions Koi, and possibly Rogue for those final couple of spots. Three spots left for those five. But here's teams. the TLDR. Winning games good. Yes. I don't know. Uh so it's a it's an eating stream. So moko or mokta is the verb to eat in Korean. So mukbang is eating room. So they like it, it became popular in Korea because uh, like tiny, tiny, cute grills would order like giant amounts of takeout or food and then just look cute on stream while eating it and describing the taste. And everybody watched it and threw money at them. It's called mukbang. Eating room. of the time today, the Callista wins. <laughs> Proven track record, might as well FF right now. Nico picked up as well by Mad Lions Koi. They have a color palette going on. Somehow these Asian girls would eat 330 million pounds of food and didn't vomit. I Honestly, that. I know I there's there's one Korean woman who's a friend of mine, and she probably weighs 90 pounds, and she can eat like twice as much as I can. It's fucking crazy. Sort of a purplish, bluey orange. You have to imagine the Nautilus is going to be... So just be cute grill and get paid. Yeah, that's how the world works. Midnight's grin. Just be cute gr grill and get paid is the fundamental law of the world. Are you just learning this? to the wayside a little bit still a very good answer to things like Nautilus also just pairs up very nicely with Callista especially with the ash taken away double range bot side of the map gives you a lot of power the question is how will they round out bang oh yeah you're probably right it, 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 bang probably comes from bang song which is broadcast yeah you're right Map Mapsosa. you're right bang is the word for room but bang song is the word for uh broadcast so it probably is eating broadcast you're probably right I should say. I'm dumb you're right Remember that that Nico is a flex pick. There's always the ability for it to be played in support. So far, this split we have. I I I translated the wrong Korean bang. Like PC bang. PC bang is PC room. But bang song is broadcast. So the bang in mukbang is probably. I agree. It's almost certainly broadcast, not room. But yes, PC bang is the actual room. Sorry guys, bad bad Korean translation, bad Monty. How dare Monty? How can I trust anything you say now? Well, at least I admit when I'm wrong, unlike most people. So PC Bang Bang would be PC streaming room, PC Bang Bang Song. Let's see if they can make that one work out for them. They're going to have to consider blind top side of the map now. Jack's going to be taken away as a possible... All right, let's talk about this game. Ori, Ash, Karma. All right, we're taking those away. Uh, Ash has been the default pick for Ice, but so has Varus. I mean, he's been playing close to... Whatever, it's close to... It's still strong. There's another pick that Jack is also really good into. I've completely... ...his hands, as you said. The Nico still a flex for Alivro if he wants it. We still have things like his Ral and his Nautilus scheme. Yeah, I like the 20. Okay, taking away ranged top laners for Mirrowin. Xinjiao, Volibear, Blind Renekton. Okay. Strong 2v2s in mid and top. Um, they're just going to auto win bot because it's a fucking smolder. So it'll be Nico support. Oh, it's Braum support. What the fuck? I'm blind. Braum was picked. So I guess we're just gonna play top Nico. Mirwin and his weird ass champion pool, okay. Do you reckon it might be on hit? I haven't looked at 
Solo so queue recently. It could be. I think the when we saw on hit Nico a lot, the shape splitter gave you a lot of extra damage. Are getting elephant mukbang now? Uh, well, I I told you guys I will do a cooking stream for you. And there will be a mukbang at the end of that when I eat the food. But I have to go get my equipment from America in May. And then when I get back, I will. I promise you I will do a cooking stream. I mean, I will say Mad Lions overall do have a lot of magic damage, though. Yeah. Um, but regardless, I think they've got a pretty interesting composition. Uh, a lot of AoE damage with things like Annie and the Nico offers a huge amount of utility. Braun for the protection. Xin Zhao acting as that engage. And once it gets on top of that target, a lot of potential Monty's Mukbang Mondays. It'll probably be Wednesdays. I have been waiting to visit South Korea for a while and probably be able to do so next year. Do you have any tips for a European? What to visit there and some tips for someone who has never experienced Asian culture? Well, you don't have to worry about the Asian culture thing. Um, yeah. I mean, it's really easy to get around in Korea if you if you speak English, right? Because every everything's all the signage is in English for the subway. Subway's super easy, super clean, super safe. I think it would be really funny for one game. Yeah, you know, just go to the go to the Gyeongbokgung, which is the palace. You know, hang out in Insadong, go drinking in Hongdae. All these things are great. Go eat food. My favorite challenges in League are the ones where everyone comes together to round junk. Holy shit, game pause, get me out. Starting on his raptors. Now the question is, will he do his bot side clear into enemy invade or will he look to do a full clear? I imagine because their focus is trying to attack the bot side of the map, they want to leverage the fact that they have a winning two versus two. And we're gonna see some priority. Already a very nice trade from the Brava Nice. Red buff has been secured by Sheo. Is this gonna be a level two gank from El Yoya? He's looking for it. Soul Subway is goaded. Extremely true. Best Subway in the world, hands down. Actually just shits on all other Subways. Alright, so we did get the... I mean, the problem here is that you actually are very vulnerable to ganks. So El Yoya comes for the... Like, look at that. Look what a psycho El Yoya is, by the way. He literally red buffs, walks all the way at level 2 with this fucking CS... And just ganks. Because they, they think they can kill the Renata Glask. Is this a good idea? Not really, because Sheo's going to be level 3. I mean, they're, they're like all level 1. They're going to trade it back. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a dumb gank, actually. Oh, the E had just come up. He actually... Uh, the caster minions! Oh, God. That was nearly a triple for Sheo. He does one cap straight to bot. Nuke. Whoa. You don't drink? Man, you're going to have a hard time in Korea, buddy. That's going to be a trade of flashes in the mid lane. Wow. What crazy action. So El Yoya is just trying to punish the aggression here from BDS. Great adaptation. Force flash from Alvaro. Forces out from the Brav. Easy first kill. They get the flash here from Ice, and that should already be enough. But they think, you know what? We can get more here. Even though Sheo has level three and gets some great damage down. Super acid By the way, this is a... In this... In the year of our Lord, 2024, you know, this is this is like something we would see uh, Malrung do back in the day. But the way... Oh, my God. I... I cannot believe he lives through that. It's actually a very dumb play, I think. Because I guess you got two kills onto Smolder, which is pretty good, but it's not going to make Smolder strong. The thing, guys, the thing that I don't like about this is that it sets you so far behind in the jungle. You know, we see him. He's he's level two still, and yeah, he he has five camps to clear. But it's really rough. And the question is, can you actually regank this lane? And will it work? Like, the question is, is Smolder strong now? And the answer is no. Like, he's still a turd with Rit Wings, even if he gets two kills early. He's early gamer. I was informed Nuke survived on 10 HP, which is double digits. True. Uh, but the power of getting your bot lane in an okay position in the early game. Against but now you, now you just, this is a smart play by BDS. Like, now you just invade. Yikes, dude. 
big, uh, big ol' yikes. He's level 4 to level 2. And also because the wave is bouncing back and they can't engage, they're level 2 as well. Are they insane? Are they fucking insane? Why are you contesting this grump? Why would you face check a fucking level 4 PTA Volibear? He he rolls... By the way, this is before... I mean, he buys the right items, right? He buys Ruby Crystal Dorans. You can't fight this motherfucker. He can just walk in on you all day. You can't fight him. It would have been much better for Jin Zhao to get two kills, I think. He won't, but Shao can bring down the thunder once again, just to keep El Yoya around if he so desires. He's going to press E on him so he can't recall. Ooh, it does so much damage, too, because it's percent uh, max HP. Now this bot lane is at the whim of Shao. Oh, no, don't dive. 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 Hi. I don't know what that means. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't press that. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I'm looking at it. Oh, you pushed it. I gotta tickle you. <laughs> Max, can I finish working, please? That's really helping him out in these trades. Now has a nice health advantage. Come on, Max. Yes. Both TPs were invested, so. Oh God. You're back. Some of that pressure, but... You close my doors and stay here. Can you? You want my headphones? Yeah. Talk to the people. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. What are they doing, Max? Larky. What's the bear doing? There's bear. There's bear. There's bear. What bear, Alpha? Where's right here? Nuke's leading as well and getting the push in mid because Annie can't push that quickly before she gets tithers. Elioya's level four and is half the CS of Shayo. So as much as yes, you got two kills. I'm asking you this. You, I, I have to go look at exactly how things expand. Boom, body, boom, body, boom, body, boom. Please don't grab that, Max. In terms of the people are listening. <laughs> after those first couple of kills. I mean, it's, it's very yeah, you can just spin there. That's good. Lines, Koi, for sure. Wow, that's rude. <laughs> I can do it when I'm done in a few minutes, Max. All right, go. Go outside, please. Just controlling that bottom side of the jungle. Defiant. Elioya's ability to gain experience. After his reset, he got moved to the top side. Secured himself two grubs. Again, this just opens up the bottom side of the map for Shao. One jelly what? Oh, here, have one of these. No, no, no. Yeah, please. No, only one for Uma, but more for me, okay? Okay. One for... Go take it to me. All right, I lock my door. I'm safe now. He makes appearances from time to time if I am streaming when he gets home from school. Observers highlighting it for us again, just because it gives you that additional on hit effect. Uh, 
just shows you that extra damage is what he's looking for. And it does work out well. Uh, still nowhere near as strong as it was. He got a, a trolley sour gummy worm to give to my wife. What a surprise! See, this is what Solo Q. This is what Solo Q AD carries think is happening to them, but this is what actually happens in Pro Play. <laughs> yeah, when you're in yeah see, the, the thing about that gank is like, yeah, you traded three for two. But your smolder is still realistically behind. I mean, you have 40 stacks at 8 minutes. You didn't get a lot of stacks. You basically just got giga bullied out of your own jungle. Now you have to deal with a level 6 Volibear versus your level 5 Jin Zhao. Jin Zhao also is only recalled one time. So Volley has Tempo, has Tunneler, has Boots. Nook is, is coming down here. I was constantly putting pressure down here. So this really backfired. Like, I think that level two gank was just, you can't do that in 2024. You think Quid goes back to Korea after this year? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to say on 100 shits. Too much happening. Melwin winning the top lane matchup as expected. You're arranged into a melee, kind of how you see this matchup going. There were a couple of gloves picked up by MDK. A yeah, Drake taken by BDS in a minute's time. Another Drake will spawn. Quid wouldn't have a spot in LCK. Yeah, he would. Just not on a good team. Expertly, he was there. He stood around. He made sure the dive didn't materialize, but for it, he loses his bottom side. You, you're not going to tell me that, oh, Adam. you know, Brian and Nongshim and DRX wouldn't pick him up. Hope you're having a wonderful day slash evening. I am. I hope you are too. Super is a I hope we're all collectively having a wonderful day slash evening. Going back through the VOD to have a quick check. And uh, Sheo did in fact clear his wolves and his Grom. Oh, we haven't even been watching Adam in the top side who's just been getting bopped by Mirwin in terms of CS from the very fun AD Nico. That seems like a fun lane to play into. PTA AD Nico, that seems horrible. I mean, it's good in lane, but I doubt it's going to be, like, good in team fights. Oh, yeah, yeah, has to ult to get out. Sheo's here. It's fine. Yep. Ooh. Flash for flash. All right. Good trade. Good trade. Trading up. Just go take Drake. Why are we Why are we pooping? Why are we pooping around? Do we really need to kill this turret? Do we really need that extra plate? What you want to do is get the faster Drakes. Get the Drake stacking going so you have a 21-minute soul. Stop fucking around in bot side. You don't need the plate. I mean, that is now four plates to Shale. I mean, credit to BDS. They've done pretty much everything right that they can do, and now Super. they're going for the die. Yeah, Super has no cleanse. Nuke's gonna just jump across here, and Breakable comes out. Mom is called. Lebrov tanking the tower, can use the bailout phase call first. There's a stun on Ice, though, and with Ice tanking it second... Fucking idiots, dude. Fucking idiots. Four plates to Shale. I mean, credit to BDS. They've done... I can't believe BDS just goes for this. They're diving a Braum? Oh, they're going for the die. Yeah, Super has no cleanse. Lebrov has aggro. So Lebrov Where does Lebrov die? It's so weird because he gets he gets pulled in. And then he gets shot out because that's the knockout, knock up. But then he just immediately—I don't know what kills him. He just immediately dies. And Shayo just like pieces out and watches them all die. Sorry, right, he hit E. That was the important thing. Like what? This 
They fucked up their win condition. You're playing a Callista comp. You're winning bot. Why do you need to kill the first fucking turret? Just go get the Drake. Get a 21 minute soul. What the fuck are you doing? Shame. Shame on everyone. We see the ultimate come out from Shao to shut down the turret. What is the target focus here? So Braum is tanking up a lot. The ultimate from Super is massive. LeBron then gets the reset. But then look at that. The wind becomes lightning. Just kills them both. The second that he comes out of it, El Yoya gets that kill. Dude, the Callista ult three for two, killed two people. MDK. No, no, I swear it was three for three. I might, yeah, yeah, I think it, Macro blast. Dude, they macro blasted themselves. Actually fucking crazy. We literally delayed this soul for no reason. Surely that won't have any impact on this game, right? Like, it's, guys, especially when we have Smolder, it fucking matters. It fucking matters. Because you're playing a race. It's always a race with Smolder. What you want, guys, what you want is to have soul fight before two twenty five before two twenty five. So now you've delayed this, and I'm going to be so disgusted if this hits two twenty five. At like 22 min. And they could have had a 21 minute soul fight. I'm going to vomit all over my desk. Because what matters is you pressuring the Drake. Especially because you're playing Callista. Oh god. Oh god. And the fucking Cloud Drake is so good. Cloud Drake is so good. Ari, Renekton, Volibear, excellent Cloud Drake champions. The fact that there is a 50 CS difference between those 80 carries and there's literally only a 275 gold lead. Absolutely crazy. MBK have done reverse mukbang. Ooh, I like it. Sheer amount of pressure. Aloya consistently has his bot camp stolen, but he's now up in gold thanks to all the kills that he keeps getting for himself. Nuke was able to get a double, so he has advantage over Frescawi, who hasn't really been able to get involved in this game so far. But aside from that, everything looking up for MDK. Let's see how they play around the next dragon of the Dude, they gave the shutdown over to uh, all the beautiful advantages they had gotten from El Yoyo's Giga Dumb Gank. from falling over they want to get it in the next 25 seconds before the plates go down after that the manager will kick them out of the all you can eat buffet and say you've had your fill mom comes down again and Bob's tanking it he's down good morning from berlin can't see you wait to see more from your co-host what, you, what does that mean oh max <laughs> yeah we we try i try and keep my kids off of social media and stuff like that because i don't i don't want them to have a forever record you know, they didn't sign up to be on social media, and I think it's really, I think it's just deranged and immoral to, like, plaster your kid all over social media. Besides, how is Max supposed to be a credible secret agent if his entire life has been documented online? You can't be a secret agent. Why would anyone rob their kids of the, the chance to be James Bond? It's fucking lame. participants in the attempts of BDS's early game. So, you know, if he comes in here of his own accord and, like, pops up, like, that's fine, but I, I just... I think it's fucking gross to, like, parents who put their kids on social media for, like, clout so dumb. You never know what your kid's gonna want later. This but a gift! <laughs> uh, why are you so suspicious? <laughs> uh, it's a great point, Medic. Uh, was it? It was a point. We'll put it there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a great analogy for what's happening in this game, that's for sure. MDK 
They may be confused, but they are welcoming of their current circumstances. Seven to four is the kill lead. 1k gold lead for now. A lot of that sitting on Mirwin. Like people just don't think about the ramifications. Like, what if your kid wants to go into politics someday and, like, there's 2,000 pictures and videos of them from zero to 18 on the internet? Then people will literally, like, cause people are gross. People will literally go back and use that as ammunition to try and destroy them publicly. So crazy. I don't know why any parent would, would like, document their kids. I mean, if you're doing it privately on, like, a private account, I think it's fine. But the public shit is so weird to me. Still that experience differential we talked about earlier on with Ice having that lead. So, we think of our next objectives. 130 until the dragon, with the bot tower being taken. BDS may consider opening up other towers, but they're cautious about the fact that the dragon is spawning soon. So, you would consider maybe moving your bot side up towards top or maybe mid to start sieging towards these uh, outer towers. Yeah, we're actually just going to stay top, keep this pressure up as much as possible. He doesn't have the TP available, Adam does, so he could get involved in a fight sooner, but does a Walder MDK just concede the next dragon in order to secure that top tier 2? Yeah. But it depends how strong they feel that they are right now. Remember that BDS is comp. The reason why Moral of the story, don't, don't do politics, kids. Yeah, because the, then you turn out like Destiny and Hassan. Into, uh, into a fight earlier than they want to, yeah. right? And then you have things Gross. like Sin Annie to help you bridge that gap. They are the champions that do have strong one item spikes, and, and the fact that LDR finds himself at 4 1 and 2 is, uh, is a great spot to be in. So it ultimately comes down to MDK and whether or not do we think that we are strong enough to fight them right now, or do we instead actually are we fine giving away this next dragon, waiting for Smaller to maybe get the second item, and then look for a fight afterwards? That's always the debate you have to have with yourselves. Mirwin will have his TP for the Drake fight. Uh, it'll be up in about 20 seconds' time, but it will be for the fight, not for any setup before the fight materializes. Super still building up this stats, has the Essence Reaver, still only one here. item as well. I guess the plan is to maybe force a fight early and then TP back to top, but you look at Mirwin right now, he's already on the objective. Alvaro going forward, there's the Unbreakable, TP coming in from Mirwin, TP behind as well by Adam, Mum being called, Shao has to get away from the back of the fight, Adam TP'd in and MDK disengage. The hostile takeover used as well by Lebrov. In terms of ultimates, we Super's said at 150. He's definitely going to get 225 by the time the Soul Drake comes up. They're not even going to get this, though, because Sheo gets chunked out because they need to engage on Alvaro? Why are we engaging on Braum? He literally ults out and then has to flash Sheo. What are what are we doing here that causes us to be so late for Drake? This next dragon, waiting for smaller to maybe get the second item and then look for a fight afterwards. That's always the debate you have to have with yourselves. Mirwin will have his TP. Like, here's my question, guys. How do we have Herald, but we can't get pressure to kill Drake? Why can't we drop Herald? And then kill Drake. Uh, it'll be up in about 20 seconds time, but it will be for the fight, not for any setup before the fight materializes. Super still building up this. That has the essence reaver. Still only one here. item as ice as well. I guess the plan is to maybe force a fight early and then TP back to top. But you look at Mirwin right now. He's already on the objective. And then we just try and go on a Braum. TP behind as well by Adam. Mum being called. Shao has to get away from the back of the fight. Adam TP's in and then runs around in a circle. So I'll take over used as well by LeBrov. In terms of ultimates, we still have Adam's Dominus. Oh, God. Tibbers as well. Fiskawi and Mirwin can team up very effectively if they can find that double ult combo. Dragon down to six. Well, I guess MDK just win then because we dove bot turret and because we can't use Harold to actually set up pressure to take Drake and Adam's going to flash in and die. Remember, Shea was in base. What the fuck is wrong with these guys? Yep, they did everything correctly. They mind-controlled BDS to dump all their cooldowns onto Braum. And not use Herald in mid lane. Get one, get the Reset, Crescent Guard out from Elioia, but Elioia will fall to 
it's Shao who rejoins the action. Super has cleanse and flash, so should be able to get away from the very Shao. bear that's beginning to chase him down. Nuke just surviving again. You look at the timing. Oh, actually, we got much later into the fight after Shao has already been forced out. It's Adam's flash in here, but then look at the wall here from Alvaro. Just the truly to its name, the unbreakable shields just mitigating the damage from the back line of BDS, and it's just a wall they can't get through. Now, that was just a poor base from Alvaro. He shouldn't have tried to base inside the enemy's jungle. Uh, then Elioria tries to work with his team, saying, hey, you know what, this is actually three versus four. I think we can get something back here, but now you've got a full health Cheo ready to fight. Nuke trying to flash in so he can get the reset off and then get the kill, get his HP back, maybe dying and then come back to life. Um, but he ends up walking away. It'd be harder and harder to fight the longer the game goes. Alvaro also got this, this Eco constantly just hitting whoever is in range. So much utility is provided that this composition. Shao walking around. Alvaro smartly putting four points in the E as well means that Ambrick was up even more often in the fight. Shao trying to get away from Mom. Super flashes for the concussive blows. And for Scowy will take the kill. Shut down over to him. Go Very good. Now we don't stack Drakes. Mirwin has decimated him. Obviously, this is not. For Scowy did literally nothing this game. I mean, he pressed R right there. That was pretty good. Could have been much worse if Al had abandoned his bot side and said, oh. and the Nico could still flex. So yeah, there was true. always this risk of, well, maybe the kill. Tangle barbs into the fate's call. Will pull Lebrov to safety. Doesn't want to re engage, unsurprisingly, as MDK went out a little bit. The wave is clear. Access into the enemy. And then rather than trying to over getting lower and lower, how maybe, maybe even gain control over that midway. When you think back to the first 10 minutes of the game, it hasn't even been pressed. It doesn't need to be. It just exists now. He'll press side. You can separate Alvaro. All right, let's look at the setup around this Drake again. Hey, look at that. He has 225 stacks. Wow. He, to be fair, he would not have had 225 stacks at 22 minutes, so they would have actually gotten the soul fight regardless. Okay. Well, this is over. I mean, they have no range, right? They have no range. The problem is that they have no, they actually have no range. So it's, it's just free Annie stuns 24 seven. I mean, he just hits Q, W bear. They, they actually just get outranged by Annie Q. So anybody, anybody is just going to get stunned. Volibear is going to get stunned. Callista is going to get stunned. Renata is going to get stunned. Renekton is going to get stunned. So it is literally Annie Q is just a free engage and a kill. That's that's it. It's done. MDK have scaled. Welcome to the late game. 24 minutes later. BDS. What is your POV on why LEC became so bad quality in the last two years? Just league wise, no production slash content. What do you mean, like gameplay wise? Because the GMing, they spread all these fucking players out onto all these. The GMing is bad. Outside of like G2 and Fnatic. Two sides. Lebrov ends up being the target. Friskawi completely one shots him, and the fight is already over before it even begins. No opportunity for Adam to find a flank. It means that BDS are full. They leverage their flexibility in the draft, and they are shutting down BDS for a much. I mean, maybe we should blame. Uh, maybe we should blame Mad Lions Koi and Carmine Corp for like Elo helling good players with some complete dinguses. Shout and scream about it, but it's kind of just the way things are. Tier one there. Have a team. DK raise their base to the ground. Nuke tries to dash in. Besides, middle of the pack in LPL and LCK is also bad right now. It, it's not like you know most of the regions are like even the Asian regions have like two or three good teams, and then I mean the drop off is pretty spectacular. Like the drop off from top three in LCK and LPL. Like the the level the the dip between third and fourth place there's like a fucking canyon there. Frankly. Oh God! What what I can, I cannot believe that MDK gets away with this fucking trash early gank. <sighs> BDS just has no idea how to play to their win condition, and now they're just screwed because the Smolder just outranges their entire fucking composition. 
and Braum just blocks all incoming damage. There's nothing you can do. Shayo just has to ult out. Don't you think that FBX is turning it up in the last few weeks? Uh, I mean, they lost to RNG, buddy. Yes, but also, like, they're nowhere near as good as the top three teams. They're not going to win LPL. Zekka's been playing well recently. I mean, uh, uh, Hanwha has been good. They've been good recently. Mm, gross. Adam refuses to give Smolder a Penta. Good for him. He literally ults so that they can't get a Penta. Good for Adam. What a terrible day to have eyes. Oh, what a shit game. Well, on that note, guys, raccoons are full. Uh, we'll be back with more LEC tomorrow. We'll be back with more LEC tomorrow for you guys. Thank you for watching. Follow on Twitch. Subscribe on YouTube, please. Thank you. Thank you. See you later.